So, at the moment, hello, hello. I actually... Hello, hello. <laughs> good to hear from you. I am still uploading, I guess they're choosing the maps over in Discord, so we don't actually have that information just yet. Okay. And I haven't hopped into the room, but uh, the trailer is just finished, so it's good to see you, Bogsy. <laughs> good to see you too. I was just uh, telling everybody that we today we've got the round of 16, we have the quarterfinals, and then the semifinals, which is going to leave uh, the regional finals for tomorrow. Oh, yeehaw. Um, so how many groups might we be casting today? Is it going to be three? I, I know there's a double elimination. Does that run up this day or no? I don't know that I'm casting. What's happening here? Oh my god, I wasn't streaming. I'm an idiot. No! Uh, it's okay. Hit the streaming button. <laughs> well, they can hear you on my stream, so they'll, they'll okay. know you exist. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I did that. Um, Yes, well, here, what do you know? I wasn't streaming, so oopsie daisies. But um, yes, so today, uh, Oscons and I are going to be casting up to three separate games, or matchups. I guess I should say matchups. Sorry. Uh, this is a best of five series for the rest of the day. So potentially up to 15 games today, although it's more like we'll probably end up seeing 10 to 12, 13, or something along those lines. Um, our first match of the day is going to be XPN versus Star, the Brazilian clan Star. After that, I believe we're slated to... Let me check here. After that, I believe we're slated to face the winner of... Actually, I'm not sure. It might be whomever from XPN and Star wins versus whomever wins between 07 and GGWP. 07, obviously... Uh, has won multiple times in the past, and therefore is a heavy favorite. Um, we may we may swap that around because it's we're not supposed to be casting the same teams over and over again. So we may end up we may end up going to see if KSC ends up facing KSF. We may go and watch that one. So that uh, would we'll be hilarious. <laughs> day looks like. not entirely sure yet. All right. Well, they've got four out of five maps picked. First one's going to be trap. Next one, Crash Zone Alpha. Third map, Northern Waters. Fourth map, Warrior's Path. Uh, XPN still picking a spawn for the fourth map, and then I guess they'll pick that fifth. And I don't actually see ship bands yet. I don't know if that's uh, put into the little tool yet. Nope, it, okay. it will be, so that's that's gonna eventually show up. Because I see an 07 versus GWP. GGWP. Um, <laughs> they both banned the Nevsky, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeehaw, I guess we'll get there at some point. <clears throat> okay, oh, I see them, there we go. Okay, so Alpha's going to be Star on the first map, right? Yeah. Uh, star is going to be Alpha, first map. Very good. Followed by XPN. Okay. Where is... All right, and the fifth map has finally come through. It is Land of Fire, so Trap... Crash Zone Alpha, Northern Waters, Warrior Path, and Land of Fire, the Broken Islands. Um, I think okay. Trap, actually. Uh, I remember in the first day, I think we kind of saw Trap as like a tiebreaker, and it was like, wow, I don't think we've ever really seen this map before. And it yeah. ended up just being kind of fascinating. It's pretty surprising to me that that's actually going to be the first map that these guys are going to play. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by that as well. Uh, this is... It's it's kind of an unusual again, like we say, we haven't really seen it before in COTS. So, or at least I haven't seen it in COTS. I don't want to speak for anybody else, but um, it's definitely interesting. Let me go ahead and swap over here to the the maps. Right, we need to reconnect my assets here so y'all can see it. And then I think you have to take the overlay and refresh the overlay. I'm just, that part. I'm just gonna throw out one more time. That five minute delay looking good. <laughs> Five minute delay is on, yes. All right. <laughs> yes, I promise. Uh, there we go. The assets have to be swapped around a couple times sometimes to um, uh, to like to really catch up. But uh, here we are. We have all five maps set up. Very exciting. Um, and then you said the Nevsky was banned by both teams, correct? No, that was uh, 07 versus GDWP. They haven't gotten oh. to the ship bands yet. They're still uh, determining the map stuff. At least the last time I looked, I assume they'll be done shortly. Okay, and there we go. So they're actually in the ship banning phase. Um, 
Looks like Star is Alpha on the first map and the second map, and then Star is Bravo Team for the remaining three. So that's good to know. So we'll have to do the uh, little swappy thing once we get to game three. But uh, still, XPN is uh, doing the ship ban, so I okay. believe they're first. Very good. I can't believe I forgot to hit record. <laughs> Start streaming. What a dummy. Can you imagine? Okay. There we go. That's taken care of. And what we got coming up next is, of course... Yeah, so uh, Star. Let's talk about Star for a second. Star is a uh, Brazilian clan. Um, I'm not too familiar with most of the Brazilian clans. I've met the leaders of several of the Latino American clans, um, including uh, Clan Sewer, which is mostly Argentinians, uh, BN, which is a lot of Argentinians, and then a couple of uh, Salvadorians, I believe. But um, the Brazilians I'm not as familiar with. So Star has put up a very impressive record so far, this COTS and COTS 12. And uh, I, I think they've lost only one or two matches, I believe. So we'll see how they we'll see how they kick the door down with P XPN today. Um, let's take a look here and see if anything's been. So played. has Star ever actually lost any matches? Or no, I think there was a double elim section for the kind of getting out of the group stage, right? Because I think XPN uh, they went against, if I recall correctly, TNG actually as kind of that decider after after they'd taken a loss to see if they could get through. Has Star gone through that, or are they technically the favor as far as, like, who comes in with the most wins? Sure. Star won all... Star won all ten of their matches during the... Uh, sorry, all five of their matches during qualifiers. In the first group stage, taking a look here, Star won all four of their matches during the first group stage. During the second group stage, Star won two over Salsa, and then lost two to 007, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, 007, double strike. And then uh, to make sure they stayed moving on into the next weekend, they won two matches after that loss to 007. They won two matches against RBMK. Uh, so they've, they've been undefeated thus far, ex with the exception of 007 which as a stalwart of high hurricane and clan battles and high placing in cots, I think there is nothing to be ashamed of in that regard. So Star's put up some exceptionally good numbers so far as we move into regional playoffs today. So we'll see how they do against XPN here. Winner, of course, of this match goes on to play the winner of 07 and GGWP, both great teams. 07, of course, uh, multiple time cots. <laughs> Cots national and international champions. They won the Verizon tournament, so no big deal, I guess, right? <laughs> oh, okay. So we got some ship bands coming. Yeah, in. so we have the Yu Yang banned out from XPN. We have the Daring banned out by Star. A little surprising that we uh, ended up tripping across a double DD, especially the Yu Yang. I, I did not see that one coming at all. Yeah, that is interesting. So. The, the biggest one I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see because of this, we're going to end up seeing multiple gearing and Shimakaze. Um, on the other hand, the fact that the Daring has been banned is interesting because the Daring is such an excellent knife fighter, uh, has great stamina when it comes to being able to survive in the match a long time due to its heal, um, has excellent gun DPM, as well as strong AP shells with good advanced uh, pen angles. It's a real sassy beast to try to deal with on uh, on a cap if you're another DD. The Yu Yang choice is interesting, and I don't I question that a little bit because I don't know how effectively we've seen the Yu Yang be used so far. Uh, its lack of smoke when you take radar is well, I don't to be come to think of it, I don't even think we've seen it as a radar Yu Yang mostly. I think when we've seen it, it's been a smoke Yu Yang. What, what do you think? I think there was one game. Uh, where they may have been trying to use a Yu Yang in terms of like trying to use the radar where maybe they take an advanced position at, right out the gate and so that if uh, somebody was trying to ram forward maybe a Des Moines with a smoke stream so they could get into that central position I cannot remember the map off the top of my head um, but it ended up not working uh, that's not what the enemy team did and the radar was not in position and unable to really capitalize other than that I do remember there were one or two games where I actually kind of wished 
that the destroyer that was supporting a push was in fact Pan-Asian, was a Yu Yang with that rapid deployable smoke. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we saw that one with the, I believe there was a Wooster and something else that was open water trying to like hide in a daring smoke, which is sort of like trying to wash yourself off or, or dry yourself off from a shower with like a hand cloth. It's just like, this, <laughs> this is just not doing it, man. This is too small. Yeah. I'm getting my uh, getting my bots set up. I forgot to get them set up for today. So bots in effect. Um, yeah, it, such an interesting choice. The daring is to me, the daring is a really solid choice just because it it can do things other DDs can't. Um, I think we're going to see in replacement, we might see some Clebers and Marceaux. They've been really popular this uh, this COTS. Now that the Smalland has been, uh, I don't know. Man, so room, improv fails me. <laughs> so the the room is up now. It's up under okay. Allen. Um, I think it was. Right. Taking a quick look here. PN versus XPN versus Star. There it is. I, I didn't even have to search for it. Yeah, oh, today that's, is my that's day. How I caught it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so they're slowly filling in. So odds are, when this happens, there's usually about a good three to five minute uh, delay as to what's actually going to happen. Um, but once again, that first thing is trap. Uh, what kind of ships are you looking at for this map? What kind of stuff do you think they should be taking to uh, make positional movements on this? Oh, Lord. Uh, that's a great question. Let me go back to the maps here. Um, so on a map like Trap, a map like Trap, I've noticed there's something that ends up happening. My voice volume is much lower. Oscons is too loud. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I'm getting a... Oh, shit. Yeah. For some reason, I'm getting a... Uh... Oh hey, whoa! It's too spike, too much. Okay, that seems that seems better. There we go. Sorry about that, Oscons. Uh, thank you, Danny. I appreciate the heads up there. Um, I guess I had myself turned way down. Um, okay. Forgive me. Right, we're talking about trap. Um, on trap, I have this. I have this feeling like on trap, oftentimes people tend to tell me that whomever wins the south side tends to win the entire match. And again, competitively with 9v9, I don't I don't have a whole lot of experience with this map other than I sort of know it generally devolves into one team takes the south side, one team takes the north side, and then they have a slugging match in the middle. Um, in my experience, the team who takes the south side tends to have the better... Uh, the better the better way when they're making their way back into the center. And I don't quite know why. Again, I, I wish I had more experience on this, but I would have to say that generally speaking, um, this is a map where you basically have to dive someone into that center cap. Um, you and I obviously know there are a litany of maps, a multitude of maps where there are just staring contests of DDs looking over uh, the fence at one another on over an island. Um, this one's a pretty obvious one, having this gigantic caldera in the center. So uh, we'll yeah. just have to see if someone decides to brave that island. I think looking at it, because you're mentioning maybe taking that, uh, taking the ACAP and trying to wrap up. So if we look at that, ACAP is going to be so much open water. Uh, there's obviously those two, the barrier islands as people are moving into their position, but then it immediately cuts open water. And the question is, how do you position your assets? So that you can open water safely while while basically forcing the other side out of the cap and back. If you're able to take a dominant position, well then once you leave the, uh, the A cap, there really aren't any islands to defend Bravo from being uh, taken. There are some islands on the outsides of it, of course, but they don't give a lot of room and, and strong firing lines unless you're literally on both sides of the cap, which would mean you'd have to very dominantly take C and then move up and force a crossfire so that maybe anybody trying to go from A to B would have to uh, run the risk of your guns. But in the early game, mid game, I, I just don't see that happening so quickly. If C becomes kind of like a people are locked into their island position attrition fight, which I fully expect it would be, then if a whoever does take a i could see them driving the enemy off open water up that two three maybe four line and then being able to walk into and claim the b space and uh at that point you've got the enemy routed maybe on like the bc line or the opposite if uh it's the southern team i could see that the real question i have is how do you take something open water 
probably with smoke, I would imagine, or by rushing three to five destroyers and trying to do some kind of really extreme destroyer harassment uh, thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, hmm. What? I mean, I, I agree with you that A, a ends up being a, a major, major part of this match, partly because in every match so far competitively I've seen in COTS, the the decisive action ends up happening in the complete southwest corner of the map. Um, like, just down in that bottom corner where there's nothing. And it's because there's two DDs trying to outflank one another without getting too far away from the cap and without getting caught by a Nevsky um, or, you know, a Venezia or some other Blappy-type cruiser um, that likes to Blapp DDs. So we're just going to have to see here if uh, without the aid of a Daring or a Yu Yang, these guys manage to outwit each other in the A-cap or if someone decides to be a hero and say, you know what? I'm changing the meta. C is the way you win this match. So I suppose we'll just have to see. It looks like everyone's almost uh, readied up here. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, Star's got eight out of nine people all readied up. So maybe somebody's swapping a ship. And over on the XPN side, half of the team is readied. So maybe they're still kind of figuring out one or two things. But either way, they still have to wait for somebody on Star's side. Maybe they're adjusting flags or something. Um, yes, um, I caught that Star had a player got black screened and had to drop out. So they asked... I guess he couldn't even quit the game, so they actually asked the referee to remove him from the game. I believe that was benevolent, benevolent something. I'm not sure. Um, so we'll we'll see if uh, you know, given given the excitement that's happened in the past, we'll see if uh, Star can grab a player. We'll see if Star can grab a player to come in. I'm just saying this right now. If Star can't find a ninth player. I'm asking them to swap me over, and I'm playing on Star's team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they said he's coming, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it should be good. So, uh, assuming he makes it in, and that's going to be nine out of nine, other people should ready up. Well, okay. So, you know, we talked about Alpha. How could you force C? Um, the only way I can think of is going to be a use of maybe a gearing and uh, just basically ramming that gearing forward. And it depends on how much radar the enemy team has, I suppose, but if you could just like literally drive an advancing smoke line, um, maybe from maybe the island that's in the top right and there's an island kind of west of it that's below another one that's up on the top of the map border. If you could kind of blitz a smoke line down there, you might be able to start driving cruisers in. And if they haven't taken uh, really strong positions over at B, you might be able to risk broadsides just kind of collapsing in and, and ramming forward through those islands. But that still seems pretty tough. I guess you could smoke line maybe from um, from between those islands and look to do a really heavy wrap all the way out on the 10 line, but that's got to take forever if you do that. That's another big problem about this map, and I think, I think that's partly why folks generally tend to avoid this map, is that... Uh, you know, because it's so spread out and because the really defining points here are either in the far southwest corner or the northeast corner, trying to take like that much time around is, man, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time and ends up leaving your team relatively immobile as you're so stretched out. So one of the one of the main issues and I mean, I realize that's also an issue on Crash Zone Alpha. Uh, Crash Zone Alpha is also set up in this sort of uh southeast sorry, southwest to northeast diagonal um stretch although i i think the major difference there okay benevolent captain benevolent is back he's on board uh no one's forfeiting today folks all right we're having ourselves a match and, it's happening uh, it's happened. um so I think when, when we get these big stretched out maps that go from corner to corner one of the major considerations is you have to have enough mobile ships that can traverse well enough the difference between this map trap and Crash Zone Alpha, I want to say, is that Crash Zone Alpha has a few large islands that block very specific lines of sight, whereas I feel like Trap here, especially on the northeast side, has far more topography, far more pieces of landscape um, that block that block line of sight and prevent people from doing it. So I feel like on Trap, you get the sense that things are farther away simply because they can't get LOS. Um, I think that's the major thing is just the uh, the landscape tends to prevent crossfires on this map more so than on Crash Zone Alpha. 
You ever get that sense? Uh, I, I definitely know how spread out it is, and the weirdness of B having those just gigantic islands, it feels like you're not really bracing off the island looking for cross shots so much as you're just kind of forced into the outer flanks or you're forced to dive into the center where it's kind of a thunderdome and you might end up getting murdered if you can't find a way back out. But right. the game is afoot, so I can swap over to gameplay and we can start kicking this one off. Hell yeah, brother, let's do it. Game one, day four. This is the... Uh... Well, this is the first day of the regional playoffs. Uh, round of 16, Star versus XPN. I'm going to go ahead and get us started with Star, if you don't mind. Coming in from Star, we have an Ohio Yamato. Good pairing there. Uh, lots of big guns, accurate guns. Then for cruisers, we've got a Des Moines, two Goliaths, and four destroyers. Two gearing, one Marcy, one Shimakaze. That's a lot of torpedoes and one very fast, very bullish gunboat. Absolutely. Marceau probably looking to hunt some people and the gearings with a lot of smoke pressure. Over on the other side, we've got XPN bringing a Montana and Ohio for some uh, dueling secondary craziness with a fast heal. We got Des Moines, double Nevsky. Gonna have to see how they move those. Uh, Stalingrad for some stalwart pressure, double gearing, and a Kleber. Okay, so... This is the first thing I think to, to talk about here is the fact that Star bringing four destroyers. I think the fact that they have three uh, smoking torpedo boats indicates that they plan on contesting all three caps, clearly. The fact that they've brought a Marceau to back up one where it looks like the Marceau is going to go ahead and go northeast uh, says that they are not just intending to, uh, to contest and deny the cat, but rather to hunt down and destroy the destroyer that ends up attempting to contest them there. That's what I think the Marceau's going to do. Or actually, is he going to go... Marceau maybe maybe diving straight into B. We'll have to see how that develops here. What's it look like on XPN side, deployment-wise? So, strangely enough, the Kleber that has so much speed has decided to try to risk the B cap before anything else. Uh, eventually, the gearing of NATO class over on Star side is probably going to have that backward com contest, or actually in Captain JM is uh, going to start contesting once he spins around. But Colbert using that early speed to go forward, well, a very short distance and begin capping Bravo. Stalin of Shrimpy is taking Brace off the center island using the Stalin's excellent range and excellent accuracy to kind of be a third battleship and give some crossfire potential. Looks to be supporting Alpha. Speaking of Alpha, we've got the gearing of Asherona moving out with a Nevsky going wide and booking it in the Montana. Well, following up kind of slow, not quite booking it just yet. And over on the seaside, we've got Phoenix Ashes' is gearing. Probably going to touch the cap before the Kamikaze, or Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent Fair with a Des Moines Nevsky going wide. Looks like that 10 line push maybe for that long term wrap as they've got four assets as opposed to the three of Star with an Ohio slowly trailing up. Tanker Killer 3 getting into position. Yep, so uh, Oscons points out something really important here, which is we need to be watching the uh, DM Nevsky combination coming in from XPN. That's going to be Potato Armor and Butters 1924. They're going to be making that uh, decision that we actually talked about earlier, which is a long, it's a long trek up the 10 line to kind of come around and try to flank C. Uh, lots of islands at sea, therefore it's going to be a while before they actually get to make their presence felt. Torpedoes being exchanged across sea, of course. Uh, Shimakaze versus gearing action doesn't look like either is going to connect unless Captain Benevolent Fair makes a terrible error, which it doesn't look like he will. Uh, strangely enough, B Cap being contested by two Star Destroyers. Oh, I totally set myself up for that. Two Star Destroyers. Wow. Uh, but neither has actually attempted to um, dive the island to block it. So right now it's clever being blocked by a Marceau and gearing. Shots coming out. Looks like they're going to go ahead. And start as I think it was the radar of Shrimpy oh, catching big boy. Cimiento. Big boy's gonna eat two torps, long torps from all the way downtown from a gearing. Eh, he slides out. Nope, he, he does catch the second he one. He He's just not able to do it. He took a shot at Captain JM Nascimento, and uh, I think he just got momentarily directed, distracted, and that was just enough time for those torps to make it all the way from wow. X100, who went over to ACAP and launched that forever ago. What well, huge, huge, huge hit on the Kleber, now way into damage saturation territory, but with only 4,000 health, what can he contest? He's out of the BCAP hardcore. That's it, guys. First game of the day, uh, star player X100. He's getting all the autographs tonight. He's going to be at the bar. Uh, go buy him a drink. See if you can take him home, folks. That's uh, that's the MVP for the day, probably right there, too. <laughs> Two gearing torps into a clever at the beginning of the game. 
That's a huge deal that's going to get uh, be secured for Star. The Marceau is now free to roam about and cause havoc. We're going to see here exactly what uh, Captain Nascimento would like to do with his life after here or not. C, of course, uh, still contested as the gearing of Phoenix Ashes, uh, contesting Benevolent Fair. They're still trading torpedoes. However, once again, Dar with the cross torps against Phoenix Ashes, is he also going to take torpedoes? I don't oh think there's any way around it. He's oh. taken two. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, there's a clip. Brownie points for clip. the Marceau on that one. Uh, he definitely had the perfect line for it. He just didn't have just enough reach. You know, size doesn't matter, but when it comes down to torpedo range, the, having a little bit of extra length sometimes can be the crowd pleaser. Uh, Star <laughs> is actually going to be the one starting with a 40-point lead as they take both Alpha and Bravo, uh, having forced off actually two destroyers. Big Boy 69 down to 4K and Asherona down below 9,000 as the Des Moines of Lord Lauren was able to radar him and get some shells in, driving him off of the ACAP. C is still contested at the moment. Very little damage being traded up there, but Alpha has four ships to four ships, but XPN does not have the health to contest at the moment. Something's got to give, and maybe Asherona is going to be able to give a smoke to this Nevsky, who frankly is just taking shells right now, and this is not going to hold up very long if he continues to do this. No, indeed. So uh, I think there's something important to note here, which is that very little HP has been traded so far. However, where the HP has left the ships uh, is critical. The damage that's been done to XPN by Star is almost exclusively to destroyers. And it's pretty severely. The Kleber down to 4,000. He cannot get that back. The gearing down 14 grand. He cannot get that back. That's huge. The destroyers of Star making their presence felt enormously as looks like benevolent captain benevolent up in the north looks like he's eaten a torpedo as well from phoenix ashes we'll see if that's decisive to let uh xpn actually move in and try to uh, even this two cap to none at disadvantage that they're currently sitting on yeah, we can see almost immediately XPN is now forcing the flank with the Des Moines of Pan Potato Armor rounding the corner. Knowing that that Shimikaze took a nasty hit, so did Phoenix Ashes sh just ramming on in there. With the Shimikaze forced to run, unable to contest with a gearing that has full health. And a Goliath of Fiota is back behind an island, but the Goliath does not have a quick reload, nor does the Yamato, which is blocked by an island. If the Shimikaze was caught by that gearing, that would be death. Speaking of that gearing, Phoenix Ashens looking with the torpedoes of a Shimikaze already entering a turn and probably going to slip right through. He does, in fact, as the Marceau of Captain JM is forced over to Charlie to attempt to contest the gearing and see if they can turn this into a three cap situation. Meanwhile, over at Bravo, we have Neto Klaas and the gearing against Big Boy 69 and his 4,000 health. They are doing a little bit of a contest move at Bravo, so no points going on there. Yep, we're going to see if Big Boy can actually get away with contesting this cap for a little bit here. It looks like there's nothing actually with radar to stop him. Uh, the action now, of course, has settled down at A a bit, as it seems to be firmly in Star's favor. Up here at C, however, like uh, Ascons was saying, we now have the Des Moines. Uh, is he going to get chunked? No, just barely surviving there as Yamato shells uh, missing their mark. However... He is now bow into a Yamato as the uh, as the shells of floors from Star will go right through the Des Moines uh, as they overmatch basically every part of the upper hull, upper deck, and bow armor. Um, there we go, little shots going into Fiota over there. Is Goliath? He can uh, go ahead and going to go ahead and reprint the ship here with the heel button. Um, looks like Star falling back in good order now, rather than be completely flanked by this Des Moines. The Nevsky of Butters hanging back a bit. I do question a little bit whether it was um, whether it was sensible to leave the Nevsky back so far, rather than to push the advantage as early as possible. Time will tell, I suppose, as Benevolent Fair drops his load of torpedoes onto Potato Armor. We'll see if those connect. Yeah, it looks like XPN was a little bit slow to commit on that Charlie flank. Down goes Ayami over in the A side. Smoke was able to keep him healthy for just a little bit, but XPN is starting to lose that grasp over on Alpha as the Colbert rotated away. The gearing doesn't have the health, and the Montana is actually pushing forward in a bit of a, bit of a Hail Mary, I guess, trying to just sort of claw in or at least contest this number and stop leading points over to Star. Four ships to two down in the Alpha cap. Nothing's going to move there 
there. The question is if they can stall, and that's exactly what they're trying to do in Bravo as well, as the Kleber has almost finished capping B. Uh, two ships to two, Bravo's just holding steady. The real question is, is anything going to happen out of Charlie? Butters has moved up. Potato Armor has driven off the Goliath, at least to an extent, forcing a smoke out of the Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent Fair. The Nevsky of Butters has doubled down, coming up this 10 line. He's going to reinforce the Des Moines, and while I don't think anybody wants to push a Yamato, that might be exactly what they're going to have to do, because while they're holding Charlie, they're not holding Alpha and Bravo. They've got to get assets elsewhere on the board, and sitting there waiting is not going to do it. I completely agree. So uh, they're in a position now where they have, in fact, flipped C. Or sorry, XPN has flipped C. XPN has uh, stepped on B. And technically, they stepped on A for a while and were denying points. However, they do not have a way to hold B or A. And as we saw, the Montana was successful at blocking A for uh, a short while, but is now being ruthlessly whittled down by concentrated fire from a Goliath, Ohio, and torpedoes from a Gearing which are finding their marks. Exceptional uh, destroyer play coming in from Star today, as it looks like booking it from XPN is going to be going down in short order. Next up on the chopping block, we're going to have to see, down goes, yes, down goes the Montana of booking it. Next, we're going to have to see, do the Des Moines and, uh, do the Des Moines, oh Lord, oh Lord of mercy. No, no, the, the Yamato of Flores from Star finding his mark and squashing the uh, Des Moines of XPN up there in the sea cap. Butters Nevsky now deciding to beat a hasty retreat, likely to come back to try and support the gearing of Phoenix Ashes to keep, to try and keep them out of sea. But at this point, XPN is three ships down against none for star and the health advantage is over a hundred grand. At this point, what can XPN do to flip this? Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't see very much in the way of opportunities for that. Looks like the Colbert of uh, Big Boy 69 dodging some shell fire and some torps coming in. They do take him down to 3k. That's a Colbert. I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to even outrun those torps, if anything else. No concern there. And, uh... I have to say, with two ships going down off XPN side, they kind of are looking like they're booking it back to port. They're down almost 500 points at this part. They don't have, uh, they're missing about 80,000 health, and they just don't have a way in. The real question here is, now that the Des Moines has gone down over a Charlie, the Nevsky can't push a Goliath Yamato alone. Gearing's going to have to land some crazy torps. He's pushing up into a Shimikaze, which I believe might outspot him, so he's going to be stalled in that front. Unless they just kind of YOLO into Bravo, they don't have much of a choice, and with that open water flank or open water side to Bravo having no cover at all from the south, there are five right. assets from Star wrapping up and just absolutely forcing XPN to sit there. They do grab B, however, but I think that's going to be a little too little too late for this match. A little too late indeed, as uh, Neto Class there, the gearing, just barely dodging a torpedo coming out from the opposite gearing from Escherona. Um, I, I wish I had seen that a little closer. My apologies. I'm a terrible caster. Uh, yeah, the, the horseshoe is forming. I don't know what horseshoe is in Portuguese. I'm assuming it sounds a lot like horseshoe in Spanish, except drunk. But uh, God bless Portuguese language. It's it's beautiful. I just can't speak it, so I'm going to tease it a little bit. <laughs> but uh, they, Star has done an exceptionally good job of managing their assets, placing torpedoes where the torpedoes need to be. And um, as, we, as we spoke about at the beginning, Oscons, a was the decisive cap. Um, I mean, XPN managed to take C. They did it. They managed to decisively take C, but they were unable to push the advantage there. I have a feeling it's just due to the fact that there are enough islands up around C that sort of says, well, we're going to make you fight for every one of these corners. Where at, whereas at A, all you have to do is take the advantage, destroy a few enemy ships, and then wrap them up. And that's exactly what Star is doing now is wrapping them up. Yeah, one of the other things that we see is XPN having their Stalingrad over in the Bravo position really was not able to get cross shots or at least anything that seemed to have some form of map dominance or effect. Phoenix Ashens over in Charles Charlie is pushing, trying to get Captain Benevolent Fair down, and that's going to be the smoke. He's going to disappear, but shots are out from the Nevsky. 1,100 down to 900... And now he is gone in the smoke screen. They might try to blind fire him at 900 points left. They need kills, 
But uh, I just don't know if that's going to happen. We do see a radar fired off from the Nevsky. Is he close enough? He is. That's going to let yeah, Captain is. Benevolent fare. He's going to be down shortly. The real question is if Phoenix Ashes is going to be able to get that kill and get out. Uh, they are going to need that point, and that's going to be the first kill. And on the star side, more Torps coming out. Not going to connect on Fiota, but there's only 15,000 health on that Goliath, which has healed multiple times. If Butter is able to get into position and maybe chisel him down, that could be even more of a point transfer. And Bravo, which did fall to XPN, is being claimed back by Nedokas. Shrimpy's Stalingrad is trying to hold the south. It might be vain as more and more and more shells pummel into him as he's reversing, still using the island for what it's worth. There's only so far he can reverse before the guns of the mighty Yamato might actually clip into him, so the south is looking to break kinda soon. XPN definitely uh, attempting to make a fight of it here and, and doing a valiant job. But as you can see, so many extra guns coming in from the ACAP now that the ACAP has been secure. It sort of feels like it sort of feels like the uh, uh, it sort of feels like the invasion of uh, the invasion of Manchuria by the Russian by the Soviets after the Eastern Front was won. It's just like, oh, Lord. Is this this wave of humanity coming in from ACAP here? Uh, and I just I don't think there's any possible way XPN can make up these numbers. Even if the Goliath of Fiota goes down here, there's still a, a Yamato of Fioris who's who's been doing the Lord's work up here. Um, you know, all the while just waiting for Des Moines, Goliath, Ohio gearing, gearing of uh, the ACAP to come in. Down goes Fiota. Uh, big boy down to 2,000 HP now, 300. He'll be going down shortly. Down he goes. Uh, still sitting on one cap for XPN, C cap versus two for Star. Uh, one minute 25 until Star walks away with this on points. Faster if Shrimpy in the Stalingrad up here goes down to the combined gunfire of the A cap. Yeah, the South has risen again, and Shrimpy is going to fall to it. Uh, that's going to leave Asherona versus Captain JM, and I don't think that's going to be a gunfight he wants to do. Garing is known for its guns, but the Marceau is known for its guns even more. As the Marceau does, in fact, open up with almost twice the health of Asherona. Desperation play. He's got nowhere to go. 3,000. If he goes down, that's going to clinch the match, and it does. That's going to be enough points. First game goes over to Star, starting the match with some excellent excellent torpedo drops that had just resulted in a crap load of pressure as those torpedoes landed directly into the hull of some destroyer oof absolutely um so you and i talked about this ahead of time and we spoke about the point of you know we were sort of speculating on this map um we were sort of speculating about how on this map this is an unusual map but it's very very large uh, its arrangement is most similar to crash zone alpha which we see quite frequently and we should see Stop me if I'm wrong. I think we should see that uh, a little later. Let me go back to the maps. Yes, Crash Zone Alpha is actually next. So wh what I'd like to see, I mean, really well played by Star. They, I, I, I got to say, like the destroyer players of Star, placing their torpedoes in the right place at the right time was 100% decisive in giving them the initiative so they could take the, um, they could go ahead and take the early points, take the early caps, and... I mean, oh wait, I've always wanted to say this, and uh, really take the fight to XPN uh, uh, as they did, uh, Oscars. What do you say, so? <laughs> I think they, uh, I think they came up ready to play, and uh, that's exactly what they did. They, they, they got out there on that field, and uh, you know, they, they put their all into it, and they, you know, they just, just decided they weren't going to quit. Yep, yep, that's, that's, uh, great, that's what happened. A great game of sports ball, would you say? <laughs> oh yeah. But I gotta say, man, those Marceau torps that they, they petered out just at the edge of their range. I mean, so the, the destroyer play coming out of Star was just. I mean, I'm not going to say it was immaculate, but it was darn good. Darn good. Those initial torp uh, lining in on that destroyer position over at Bravo, and then even still the cross torp situation at Charlie. I mean, the torps coming out of the Shima and the torps coming from the Marceau, they were not only very accurate, but I mean, they were timed well too. Uh, must have some excellent communication, and I'm personally hoping to see more of that star destroyer play mm -hmm. as we go forward. Um, yeah, I don't know. They might be uh, they might be tarking a few more games with that. I I love this. I hope that a meme from this series, if Star goes on to con like continues on uh, and ends up maybe top four, let's say, I hope that the Star Destroyers becomes a meme uh, from this Cots because really excellent play. I'm looking forward also to see if that was a one off or if this is something 
we can consider as their thing as we move on to Crash Zone Alpha, the next map, the similar arrangement, like we discussed, to trap. This is a diagonal southeast, sorry, southwest to northeast arrangement. Um, lots of space means lots of ability to reposition, and that's what you need DDs for. So very interesting choice that they chose to bring four destroyers in the last match. Three torpedo spewing, cap contesting, smoke stealth destroyers, and one bad boy to run around and beat people up. Um, the Marceau, of course, of Star in the last game, it didn't really get a chance to run and beat too many people up, but it did provide extra pressure uh, when was necessary. So yeah, it, I'd really like to see how it does in, uh, on Crash, here on Crash and Alpha. Yeah, I mean, having the double DDs contest Bravo, uh, it actually worked out very well for them. That was one of the reasons why those Torps hit. The Marceau being spotted by the Clubert, I, I believe they probably detected each other. Um, because they had both destroyers, it meant that any cap points weren't lost, uh, or rather they still had the ability to take the cap as the Marceau ran. And the Marceau was able to distract the Clobert at the crucial time. Oh, there's a ship over there. You take a few... Sh oh, there's Torps. No. You know, it worked out. I don't know if it was orchestrated that way, but it absolutely came out. And their ability to move the Marceau from Bravo to Charlie to continue to hold that pressure once a cap had been taken just meant that the gearing could push up, but could only push up so much. When that Marceau was able to rotate, it was able to claim space. And we could absolutely see that same thing over here on Crash Zone Alpha. If you have a Marceau in, uh, if you have a Marceau quickly sent to Bravo, it could brawl down a DD as the rest of the uh, other assets have not moved to their final positions just yet. And you could certainly have a Marceau that flexes between Bravo and Charlie or Bravo and Alpha with a very, very rapid redeployment and an extremely high fire rate. I'm going to have to ask you to hang on for one second. I let the chat know, uh, or I let the, the game ref know. I have to run to the bathroom and grab a glass of water. I'll be right back. Okay, have fun. Hope everything comes out all right. So if we continue to look at Crash Zone Alpha, um, often the ships are going to go wide. I don't know if I'm on Bogsy's chat, but I will hold down my thing so we can talk about the map a little more while he's AFK. One of the things on Crash Zone Alpha that you're very often going to see will be some form of Moskva or Stalingrad using the islands that are kind of poked into Charlie, kind of poked into Alpha. So they can provide some really solid radar threat as well as just something that has to be dislodged, usually by crap loads of fire that's going to come from something wrapping around the A or the 10 line or the one and the whatever the last one is, J? I think it's the J line. Whatever it is, it's the one all the way on the bottom. That's kind of the long, slow play, which could could include smoke or could include extremely floaty shells, perhaps from a Wooster or maybe a Des Moines. Uh, I believe there are some others that have been tried, but if we're going to see a Wooster, this is definitely one of the maps to see it on, as this Wooster can just kind of pick one of those outer edge islands and just rain murder upon whatever Moskva, Stalin, Petro, well, I guess not the Petro because that one's banned, but whatever Russian asset gets rammed on an island and sat there so it can radar until it dies, uh, that's definitely something that can dislodge it. In the mid- You're talking about uh, Russian steel on the, on the sort of border islands? Yeah, on those inner islands on Alpha and Charlie, people yeah. love to sit those Moskva Stalins in there so oh, that yeah, they can yeah. have that radar pressure and just be this unmovable object. Because, I mean, in order to get the torp lines, you're going to be radared. In order to get uh, gun lines, you well, you could be radared. So anything that can kind of, like, shoot over that island, uh, I'd really... I, I guess the question is, how many Woosters do you expect to see? <laughs> Um, I would say no more than one from each team, uh, if they choose to bring any at all. I think sometimes a Smolensk, wait, Smolensk is banned for the, uh, sorry, Smolensk is banned for the tournament. Don't listen to me, I'm a scrub. Um, so, I, <laughs> the Woosters can be extraordinarily good, like you were saying, at digging out those, uh, Russian cruisers that end up taking those hard points. Um, the key thing here is that to do so, uh, they have to be essentially moving to the flanks, which means southwest or northeast corner as we just saw in the previous match the difference is that unlike trap i believe that on crash zone alpha taking the northeastern flank and flanking around is actually more feasible to result in a win for resulting in a win than uh it is on trap i think that trap on the northeast side it's just not as pragmatic because of the amount of places where the losing side can hide on 
on uh, excuse me on trap on this map however i believe the the caps are a little more conventionally balanced i want to say so i believe either side works it just depends on who sort of manages to dislodge their opponents first so the big question for me are the star destroyers coming in force today are we going to get four destroyers again from star or are we going to see uh maybe are they going to reduce to three crash zone alpha what do you think I don't know. Uh, if they bring four to five destroyers, they could be Tark in the match, and I would expect them to be invadering maybe Alpha or something and trying to go for some severe interesting rap. Come to think of it, I believe we've seen, uh, I think it was a Haragumo and something else that was used in place of like a Des Moines Wooster, because it can get uh, as a destroyer, it can move so much faster and operate almost independently with its smoke. So we might actually, instead of seeing the Wooster, etc., we might see Haragumos. We might see some kind of gunboat destroyer that's able to provide a lot of pressure. Obviously not the Daring, as that one's banned, but Haragumo is definitely a death boat, if anybody wants to get in that one. I have seen that one used um, on this map multiple times if I'm thinking correctly. As far as something else you'd mentioned, where the islands over at sea kind of conducive, if you look at it, if you take sea with a significant enough amount of assets and you're able to somehow contest and hold Bravo, you have four islands as opposed to kind of the two, which sort of looks like a weird pelvis, I guess. If you're able to brace off those four islands, it gives you a lot of defensive positions and a fair amount of wider crossfire for anybody trying to breach into Bravo. If the enemy yep. team has gone and taken A and reinforced it, and you've taken C and reinforced it, I think it comes down to who has the better bunkered up positions. And I think C offers you more if it comes down to a back and forth trade of who's going to get mid. Yeah. So, I mean, does that result, do you think, do you think it's a, a better choice to go for essentially take A and B or to take B and C in general? Uh, I have to say that if anybody who's played this in ranked, as this thing pops up all the time, a lot yeah. of people love to take Charlie. And it's almost like the devs knew that Charlie had some inherent advantages, and that's why they only put a single contested cap there. Because if you take that, you already have the strength. The question is, how do you reapproach the rest of the map? With both caps on the other side and a ranked match, well, that's quite a lot of stuff to take. But with Bravo being so extremely close, I think it's something that might be manageable, especially with like reversing a DD. That being said, there is a small island on that southern part of the Bravo, well, southern southwest, which can be used to shield some people that are really close to cap contesting. I don't know about that. Um, I'll be honest, I don't remember what the original question was, and frankly, I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> it's quite all right. Um... That's quite all right. Looks like we're almost ready to go here. Everyone's ready. Nope. I think XPN is waiting on one more player. Uh, no explanation of it. We'll just sort of see. Yeah, if only you could like adjust your loadout, commander, this, that, flag, whatever, uh, while you were in the training room. I think people wouldn't have to hop in and out. But uh, I do believe I've seen all the XPN folks in here just a moment ago. So... Probably had to swap out, maybe swap skill, double check flag, something of that nature. But it looks like Alpha Team is fully readied up. Bravo was, well, readied up with eight people. So I imagine this is going to be kicking off, hopefully within a minute or two. Yeah, let's hope. I mean, uh, I hope, certainly hope nobody's, nobody's keeping count on the time, because that would be a shame, wouldn't it? <sighs> yep. Well, um, all right, well. Fine. Here I we guess go. we'll just sit here then. <laughs> we'll just sit here. You know what the worst thing about casting is? Because I think my energy level goes up a little bit, I start to, I don't start to sweat, but I start to smell. I don't know about you. I can smell myself in my office right now. And it's just tragic. It's just tragic. I, I realize that I don't know quite what to say, but... This being the internet, I'm sure there are people at home that are like, aw, and they're kind of jealous. <laughs> I suppose so, yes. <laughs> but definitely, well, definitely <laughs> use deodorant when putting yourself in high-stress situations, as it, uh, as it does reduce that some. Even though you're yeah. in the comfort of your own home, I mean, you still should. I survived coronavirus, and I survived getting the coronavirus vaccine, which completely kicked my ass. And yet I'm stressed out and sweating over casting King of the Seas. How many how many days did it kick you under the weather? Was it one or 20, two or 20, 24 hours? I got the Johnson and Johnson. Uh, I got the Johnson and Johnson vaccine after okay. having already gotten COVID, and for 24 hours I felt like I had 
the worst hangover of my life with the addition of 102 fever. But it only lasted 24 hours. I feel great now. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm invulnerable to everything except kryptonite. So come <laughs> at me, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> games game start well, i haven't i haven't gotten the second shot yet but i was warned that once your body is like it recognizes it you know it starts going all like uh get out of me heathen you know that just goes yeah. full like crusades on that stuff but uh game is underway we get to load in and it looks like stars over in the alpha spot so what are they bringing bogsy star destroyers come on to attack on that star destroyer that's what they're doing we're back to four destroyers folks we're doing double gearing with a marceau and a shimikaze i love this star might be my new favorite clan right now salem goliath moskva montana yamato very similar lineup uh to trap they have swapped out the ohio for a montana they have swapped out a uh i think another goliath for a moscow or maybe a nevsky it was nevsky for a moskva um uh, but a very similar setup. We'll see if they go triple cap. Over on the other side with XPN, we've got Montana, Ohio, same as before. Ohio for the brawl, Montana for the oof. Well, technically both for the oof, but I mean, eh, they, they have oof in their own ways. Double Des Moines, we got a Stalin. So they don't have any of the massive amount of healing that we see over on the star side with the Goliath Salem. But uh, they definitely have some Stellinium. Can't can't count that one out. And Des Moines is obviously very mobile with the legendary mod. Then we've got double gearing, Marceau, and the Haragumo. I expected to see it, and sure enough, it happened. I have to wonder if they're going to send it to the north or the south. Yep, so quad destroyers coming in from both sides. Of course, the Haragumo being the odd man out over here on the XPN side, acting more like a light cruiser, sort of like a... Uh, I, want, I don't know whether to say a poor man's Smolensk or an, uh, a hero's Smolensk. Is Harigumo filthier than Smolensk, in your opinion? Well, I never saw Smolensk as being that bad, but then again, I was never somebody that rang 400,000 damage games out of it. So, as far as uh, being on the receiving end of the, uh, the long stream of unpleasantness coming out of the Harigumo, I mean, I'd have to say it's kind of even, because at least the Smolensk, like if you're dancing 16 plus, which I don't even think is a is a thing anymore um i mean they're just so floaty whereas i i feel like the haragumo shells are slightly more accurate maybe uh yes they are destroyers i believe in that regard i believe they tend to be a little bit more accurate um but uh <clears throat> here we go first action of the game coming in here i'm confused well no okay so look at the destroyer let's just let's just see this right now the gearing of neta class has launched his torpedoes way ahead of time over at the sea spawn to try and catch whatever DD is going over there. He may himself, however, be on the receiving end of a torpedo coming in from Phoenix Ashes. I don't think he will. I think he's going to see these as he's reversing. Let's let's pay careful attention, though, to the DT to, DT the DD deployment uh, of both teams in the B and C. So uh, Star has gone ahead and sent a gearing and a Marceau directly into A to contest a single gearing. Uh, they've left another gearing, Neta class, here to contest B, which he's doing. Um, XPN sending a, uh, a gearing, the gearing of Phoenix Ashes, into B, who just got spotted, now trading with the gearing of Neta class, but also the Marceau of Nikiri Ayami, um, who's sort of, sort of wistfully hanging out in the back there. It seemed like he was about to make a dash for A and then stopped. I'm not quite sure if he got cold feet or not, but that leaves the Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent, who is essentially, Jesus, look at this torpedo soup coming up here at sea. Torpedo soup on this Haragumo who is too big and too fat to avoid them. Is he gonna get nailed here? Star Destroyers, no, he's gonna dodge them this time, but my God, the Destroyers from Star really, I think, are gonna, they are up in their stock in this tournament, let me say that. Yeah, XPN comes through with two torpedo bounces, meaning that they came close enough to skim the hull, but not enough to detonate. As Big Boy 69 was able to pull back, and same with the gearing, which once again is going to claim uh, claim spot over at Alpha, just with some extreme pressure. One question I have to say is, Nikiri, uh, Nikiri Ayame, when the Marceau is over in Bravo, which they have taken, Phoenix Actions has taken it, one would assume that he's got RPF, waiting for Neto to try to move or recontest or something. Uh, why this gearing has, or sorry, the Marceau has not run it down and started to force this gearing to smoke or get the hell out, I'm a little surprised at, 
But maybe with the Haragumo being forced off from Big Boy, they've decided to get some kind of spotting so maybe the Haragumo can smoke and uh, donate his love across the aisle over to the starstruck people at uh, Charlie that currently hold the cap. <laughs> It's two caps to one, although one is uh, Bravo is contested. Neto Kloss versus Phoenix Ashes. No shells exchanged this time, but they are close enough that they can probably perform some of the mating dance. And uh, a whole bunch of not much happening there. I guess we just have to watch XPN setting up for the play at Charlie, because with only three ships down at Alpha against five ships from Star, there's nothing happening there. Yeah, so I'm going to do a little editorializing here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to say something that maybe might come to bite me in the ass in the future but um when when you bring four destroyers like this and one of them is is more of a light cruiser and less of a destroyer that one that that light cruiser needs to be supporting another destroyer it needs to not be attempting to perform the destroyerly functions on his own so <clears throat> um the decision by xpn to send the haragumo solo up to sea to contest a shimikaze is an interesting one i think that what's what they will probably have realized is that that Haragumo is not really able to do so. He's not able to cap contest, and that's why they lost C. Uh, the Marceau, of course, has come back, but if you recall, he originally intended to move through B towards A and then came all the way back to C. Um, whether that's decisive or not, I don't know. I don't think it will be, but it's difficult to say. And given how well Star's destroyers, the Star Destroyers, have been performing so far, ooh, big hits coming in on the Marceau of Nikiri. Um, I, I don't think that you can afford to give the destroyers of Star any time to pull off any shenanigans or get any extra cap time. Yeah, Nakiri IMA training some shots out to Captain Benevolent Fair. He immediately smokes, and those torps get dodged by the Marceau. Marceau is heading in the direction of the Shimikaze, and I would like personally to see him try to run him down. With a Goliath that's at a pretty extreme range, having to juke shells from a Stalin and a Des Moines and a Yamato, which, I mean, is going to have some pretty scary shells, but they're so far out... Well, maybe if he's charging the Shimikaze, he gets too close to the Yamato, but down goes a gearing. Asherona taken out down in Bravo Cap, as we've got the gearing as well as the Marceau of Star moving over and making a play. That's going to be a big break over in Bravo and a complete abandoning of A, as XPN is now moving off with the double DD hanging out in Bravo. One of those being a Marceau. Here I was talking about a Marceau in the north trying to run down a Shimikaze. What if there's a Marceau in Bravo running down a gearing? Might happen, 13,000 health on that Marceau, but with the saturation, that's almost like it's 20, and with the help of Neto Kloss, that's going to be a lot of guns on Phoenix Ashes if they try to make a move for it. Absolutely. Huge torpedo strike on Nakiri Ayami of uh, XPN's Marceau. He took a torpedo from the gearing of Neto Kloss, uh, or possibly even the Marceau of Nascimento. I don't think so. Um, again, the destroyers of Star, the Star Destroyers, are... Are are just their their Dogecoin, man. They're just their stock just goes up and up and up as they land torpedo after torpedo, clutch torpedoes on the destroyers of XPN. Two games in a row here now. As the Haragumo of Big Boy says, uh, hits the fuck it button and just goes guns out, buns out on uh, the Yamato of Camper CMS. I don't know quite what he's really going to be able to get away with here. He might light some fires, but uh, he's exposed. He's letting everyone know where he is. Um, the good news for the good news for XPN is they have a solid hold on C. They're not losing C anytime soon. Um, the good news else for XPN, they do have a solid uh, contest on B that's not likely to go anywhere anytime soon. The bad news for XPN is they are slowly getting wrapped up on the uh, south side by A, as the Des Moines of Butters has been forced away by the gearing of X100 uh, and the Salem of Lord Loran. He's not able to sort of hold the southern southern flank, hold the J-line, the way that, say, um, Stars, Goliath, and Yamato have completely formed an impenetrable line along with the Shimikaze Benevolent Fair. Look at the way that Star has lined up their ships. They have a perfectly spaced out <laughs> skirmish line as uh, Nascimento here in the middle looks to be going down as he's trading with uh, Nakiri Ayami. Lots and lots of shots crossing the center here at these destroyers. We'll see who gets the worst of it. Right now it's looking like Nascimento is. Is he going to go down that Marceau uh, damage saturation shrugging off a lot of damage, but will it be enough? It doesn't look like it. 
Marceau kicks in the afterburner as the Harugumo collapses in, Gearing taking some shots as well as the Marceau of Nakiri. That's a lot of damage onto Captain JM. Any advantage he had in kind of a push forward YOLO contest is just falling away before our eyes. Big Boy 69 is still looking for the wrap, but the afterburner of the Marceau is too dang strong as it is about to get out. It does. That's going to leave Neto Klaas actually opening up and popping a smoke to try and get something into Phoenix Ashes while Abel, who responds with a smoke in kind. Big Boy 69 not able to find any targets at this point. Far enough away from large ships, but close enough to small ships. Uh, might be looking to do some kind of damage, potentially swapping into the uh, smoke of Phoenix Ashes and trying to get some guns on something. But in order to do that, he's got to see it. And right now, he just doesn't have any visual targets that he could really rip into outside of a Montana that's, well, not going to yield any benefit. Butters, 1924, <clears throat> continuing to get harassed down in the bottom as the Montana of booking it, well, stopped booking it, um, actually, before a wall of torps is about to come in. So that worked out pretty well for him. Good thing he stopped his run. Butters is able to turn around, doing a bit of a gamer turn in front of a Moskva, but looks like he's probably gone dark with that smoke line as Fiota moves up under the watchful eyes of a Montana that wants to rip him in half as Lord Lauren takes a position in the south with a bow in. We do have over in the north, XPN is pulling their Stalingrad off of the C-10 line. Uh, that was just too far away to have any useful impact, so they're immediately pushing him south, trying to brace against the southern push of Star. Once the Stalin gets in, probably in about two to three minutes from now, that's actually going to be quite a bit of a bolster. However, Potato Armor has realized, oh shit, I'm all alone, and Captain Benevolent Fair, a Yamato and a Goliath, may soon gamer turn right around and push that position and potentially take back charlie as charlie looks pretty sparse if they want to push that issue so uh, you're absolutely right i want to point out too that uh just i i'm just i'm just gonna fanboy i'm gonna mark out over the star destroyers today because uh x 100s gearing laid a perfect smoke screen to allow the moskva of star fiota star fiota of fiota just to push across that little uh little gap there in front of a montana and a des moines that could have blapped the shit out of him just so that the moskva could reposition and help put extra fire on these destroyers in the middle as uh nascimento does finally go down but now uh, Phoenix Ashes is not long for this world. He's about to get absolutely squashed here. Down he goes as uh, the Hydro of Fiota, as well as the radar, is now in full effect. Cross B. I expect B to go back to uh, Star any moment now as Big Boy is probably going to have no choice but to drag his Big Boy buns out of here. So let's take a look at the map real quick because... Uh, Special K and pointed out in my chat that uh, the C cap was set up very nicely by XPN to have a crossfire set up. However, they lacked the vision to make use of the crossfire. And I think a big part of that was the fact that they took a Haragumo up there instead of um, uh, one of their gearings. Or even even maybe the, I mean, the Marceau is, is less stealthy than the Haragumo, so I don't want to say that. But the gearings are really the way that you do that. So... What's going to happen now, I think, is that the Yamato, Goliath, and Shimikaze of Star have every inclination to say, hey, we know your shit's in B now. <laughs> We're going to go back to C. And that's exactly what's happening. Like, look at these guys fan out to take on Potato Armor's uh, Des Moines over here, as for some reason, XPN has sort of just meandered back into the center towards B. Um, this, this is just, it's just begging Star to start wrapping them up uh, find those cross shots and those citadels whenever they want to. Torps out a tanker's killer from Bravo. Looks like, well, maybe one will Two. connect. One. Uh, Two. That's that's one. Ah! So he does actually eke it out, but he's also doing a bit of a show in front of the Yamato who just popped some shells. Camphor shells coming out. Are they going to connect in any kind of big way? Uh, not so much. Uh, they shot a little high, overpenned a bit, took some chunks out of the superstructure, and the Ohio's going to be able to get to cover, uh, but still under the watchful gaze of Flores' Montana. Yes, they did abandon Charlie in force, and when they just started losing the ability to really push Bravo or brace against the push, they, they called their Stalin way off of Charlie to come out and help. Well, one of the problems with the Stalingrad is its detection is enormous. The Star Destroyer spotted it from space, and then they moved for the kill, and and uh, as a response to that, the Goliath and the Yamato, there's the Goliath of 
Gui uh, pushing forward. Now, it turns out uh, Des Moines is one scary customer, and that Des Moines is unloading into the face of the Goliath. But the Goliath not only has a huge heel, it's got torpedoes. If it's going to round the corner, it could make mincemeat out of this Des Moines. If it's able to get those torps off, and while the Yamato is still playing safe, uh, that Goliath has a low enough detection that it might be able to at least stall Charlie and force some destroyers to come out of Bravo. Meanwhile, Fiota's Moskva unable to sustain its life over at Bravo to the withering amount of stuff that XPN has moved to it. Uh, that's actually going to look like it's going to force them off as the gearing of Neto Klaas and now could be overrun without really for any form of assistance other than a Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent Fair hiding behind an island and a Montana that's going to have one shot every 30 seconds. Oh, the Ohio goes down. The mighty guns of the Yamato take that one. He's come in, tried to get a good angle, and Goliath, unable to get the torps, goes for the ram. That is going to leave C in XPN's hands for the moment until the Yamato is able to take it. But with a Harigumo and a Marceau able to bull rush that Yamato, I mean, yeah, they're low, but they're destroyers, and they've got yeah. torps. So I don't know if he's going to brave this, but I think he might think that he has to. Star is currently in the lead, even though they're down two caps. Four minutes, 12 seconds, three minutes, 36 seconds over on XPN side. They've got about 35 seconds that they either have to stall or make up if Star wants to somehow claw this back. Yep, so uh, like like Oscons is pointing out there, at the moment, there are t it's two caps to one, uh, XPN's lead. Star is up by uh, a little over 100 points. Star has a uh, one ship advantage over XPN at the moment with a, almost 100,000 HP advantage over XPN. Uh, looks like, yep, the gearing of Neta Klaas will be stepping on B right now. That changes things. Star wins in 3 minutes, 36 seconds on points if things continue as they are. Um, Star, of course, still starting to form that horseshoe, looking more like the Siege of Stalingrad now, which is a complete a complete circle as, uh, as the XPN ship's just getting roped into a tighter and tighter circle here. And look at this torpedo soup coming in on booking it. He will dodge most of these torpedoes, but good lord, the Star Destroyers, a force to be reckoned with here in COTS 12. As, uh, oh god, booking it's going to take two from the first wave. And then it's looking like another two from the second wave, causing Shrimpy to have to push off as well. I think Shrimpy can dodge those torpedoes in his Stalingrad, but... Uh, Man, just really extraordinary destroyer play coming in from Star. Love to see that. Yep, uh, Shrimpy takes one torpedo from the gearing. Um, whether this Yamato of uh, Camphor can actually push into a Marceau, I don't know. Uh, unlikely, he's going to take the um, patient. He's going to take the patient way, and he's going to go north and then around into sea from the north side as the Montana of Bukinet finally succumbing to concentrated fire and torpedoes. Just... We just won't last long against those Star Destroyers. That's no. That's when what's that, been last. That's been going through my head the whole game. Yeah, when that when that laser gets focused on you, it's just going to drill right down to the core, and that's absolutely what happens. Torp after torp after torp, uh, hit after hit after hit, slam after slam after slam. It just starts busting up and breaking through, and that's exactly exactly what the Star Destroyer did to uh, Alderan, and a whole bunch of people people cried out in terror. So I believe that would be the XPN folks that are just like, come. Come on, we were so close, but it looks like Star has been able to take this back. Captain Benevolent Fair was able to sit in and cap block Bravo for over that 30 seconds that was needed, and then booking it, booked it back to port. And uh, unfortunately, that was a huge point swing over to Star, and uh, they are wrapped and extremely low. Marceau is going to be going for a YOLO play. Got 30 seconds to make this happen. Nakiri is going to pop some torps with a. A speed and a prayer, probably a speed boost and a prayer. Question is if the Yamato is going to be able to get the shot against a Marceau with 2,000 health. If those shells connect, that's going to be the end of this match. But if the Torps connect and do a significant amount of oof, I don't know if that's enough to take Yamato, but it might somehow put them back in the game. No, that's going to be a kill, and that's going to finalize it out. Game 2 going to Star. Some excellent play from PN. Actually came down damn clutch in the end there, but uh, just a little bit was able to get it over the hurdle, and Star was able to uh, execute, well, execute the win. Yeah, wow. So um, this one was a little closer for sure. Um... This one was a little closer than the first game. Uh, XPN definitely, I think, I think that XPN made a good choice by setting up a, a very, a very savvy crossfire up at the sea cap. However, and um, and I'll credit Special K in the chat here um, for pointing this out. They just they they didn't 
keep the vision and control necessary to make use of that crossfire. A crossfire is irrelevant if you, if you can't fire at anything. I mean, I know that makes me sound like an idiot saying that, but it's just the reality. Like, once you take the time to set up these, these really useful um, tactics, you have to make use of them. And if you can't make use of them, well, unfortunately, you didn't do yourself any good. So, um, game two going to star really really impressive destroyer play coming in from the folks at star i have i have yet to see torpedoes launched with this amount of predictability um even from some of the best teams in the game so uh kudos to them i'm very much looking forward to seeing how far they go in this tournament if they uh pull off another win uh, looks like our teams are going to switch sides here so i'm going to take a moment if you don't mind to uh go ahead and just swap that as well uh, swapping team one for star XPN. Thank you to everybody in both chats uh, who are watching Oscons and myself. Uh, of course, the obligatory. <laughs> we really like doing this, and we appreciate you guys watching with us um, and choosing to come watch us. I yeah, I, I'm just blown away by by these star destroyers, and I love that I get to say star destroyers. <laughs> Yeah, I stuck a Tarkin and a Vader joke in. I, I feel pretty accomplished about that. Although I think it, I think it was uh, low key enough that it just couldn't click. Um, you know, you do what you can with what you got. Uh, over oh, in the yeah, training brother. room, XPN is swapping over into the Alpha side. Star is going to be making their transition over to Bravo, and the next map is going to be Northern Waters. But just to, to not leave Game Two just yet, um, there was a moment, and I think honestly, this was a decisive moment. Technically, there were two. One was that the Marceau of XPN was waiting in Bravo, waiting for something to happen. Now, if they had rushed that gearing, they might have been able to get a kill. Probably not, because the gearing could have just smoked and bailed. That absolutely could have happened, would have happened, and it might have been an overcommit to try to run him down. But Star did not have the assets in place to assist their gearing if they really wanted to force him off. Similarly, if that Marceau had gone with the Harugumo over to Charlie, well, the Shima does outspot them, but the Marceau outruns the Shima. And with only a Goliath and a Yamato up there, they just didn't have the throughput to really protect their asset. Once again, the Shima could have smoked and just run, but that's part of what the Marceau is there to do. Uh, the Marceau is there, one, to move from one cap to the other, but also to absolutely threaten to just walk over King of the Hill and start ripping people down and say, this is mine now, get wrecked. Um, yeah. I know there was a Marceau on the other side with Star, and the Star Destroyers did what they did. The Marceau, I think, ran over to A, looking to make plays, but unable to find them, eventually going over to B, where Marceaus go to die. And... Um, I, I think if if one of those destroyers, if one of the Star Destroyers had been blown up, uh, they might have been able to hold the field, you know, with their capital ships. And right. um, that could have, there was a lot of potential there. I think, one, I mean, obviously the match was very close, but I think if there was just a little more anti-destroyer pressure, it really does look like Star has not only excellent destroyer plays, but a need for those destroyer plays as a victory condition. If we see mm. in this upcoming map another three, four, five destroyer, whatever coming out of star, I think it's really got to come down to XPN to identify how do we deal with and kill destroyers above right. all other things because if they're able maybe to sacrifice a ship but to severely damage one or two or get a kill on an enemy destroyer that may actually start to mess up with the long-term game plan that star is bringing if they are in fact banking on their destroyer play which so far in the first two matches it does look like they have been doing yeah um you know so i, I want to bring it back now to the ship bands i'm going to throw that up here real quick the ship bands um XPN banned the Yu Yang, and we were speculating on why this might be. Someone in chat earlier did mention to me that in previous matches, of which there have been, I think, eight or nine that Star has played already, uh, Star has made effective use of Yu Yangs. So I guess XPN did their research and decided that uh, banning the Yu Yang was the right way for them to sort of help blunt Star's uh, destroyer play. <laughs> On the on the other hand, obviously, on the other hand, 
it meant they brought gearings and shimas, which we've seen them use to extraordinarily good effect. So I almost wonder and... if the Yu Yangs would have if the Yu Yang would have been an easier thing because how many torpedoes have we seen XPN's destroyers eat? That would have passed right under them if they were Yu Yangs. Yeah, I I know we've seen at least three. It may have been more. And again, if that Marceau just had a little more length where it counted, uh, you know, that would have been two into a destroyer early over in the Charlie cap of map one, and that just would have been devastating. Um yep. the the torps are completely on point. And yeah, if the Yu Yang had been given through and Star actually taken it, then that would have been one destroyer that had no torps in an anti-DD capacity. Hell, if they brought more than one Yu Yang, that'd be even even less pressure. But the ability to just constantly cross torp over and over and over, uh, I, the amount of pressure coming out of it is immense. We saw it on Booking It, we've seen it on Destroyers, we've seen it in multiple times across multiple maps. That's just so concerning. Maybe, and I know this is going to be a hell of an outlier, but what if XPN tries to make a move over to a Z-52? Um, just some kind of anti-torpedo screening or potentially anti uh, Anti DD stuff. Like if they try to run maybe a Z52 with a Marceau. Okay, well, if they YOLO that Z52 in and it bullet sponges up some damage, or hell, the Marceau does, but they could hard commit to trying to run down and killing a destroyer or at least forcing it back. Because if it pops smoke instinctively when it starts taking gunfire, maybe because the Marceau pushes it, then you have the Z52 basically mark its territory and say this is mine deal with it if they've got a marceau that can run down a smoke screen that is a dead dd i have to wonder if they've got some kind of hydro pressure against the torp soup if that could just completely dismantle some of star's strategy yeah i mean <clears throat> the big the big question here of course is is these torpedoes um i'm i'm inclined to say that what xpn really needs to do here is they need their information to be, they need their information game to be stepped up. Um, I generally, those of you watching can tell that I generally don't shift the vision all that much as I'd like us to be able to see as much as possible. Um, but I, I feel like some more Russian radar, some more fast striking uh, cruisers like Venezia's, Nevsky's, uh, Moskva's will help them make use of the opportunities that they have to strike these destroyers that clearly are causing them enormous grief. Um, the next map coming up here is going to be Northern Waters. Northern Waters is not nearly as spread out as the other two maps. It's not diagonal. It's side to side. It's horizontal. So um, this is the deciding factor. It's possible that XPN might be able to mount a comeback here knowing that the map is a little less spread out. Um, and the destroyer factor will be, I, I want to say, a little less, um, a little less intense. So, game is about to get underway. Let's go ahead and hop in. I, oh. I, I'm gonna be honest, man. <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping to see a Z52, and we just got into the hey! game. Wrong side, but you got it. <laughs> well, yeah, we do see the Z-52. I actually have to wonder, because Star banned the Daring, and the Daring yeah. has Hydro. They might actually feel that, you know, Hydro would protect them from the Torp Soup, but yep. it's not going to be. We see uh, XPN is loaded in. What do they got, Bogsy? Um, well, okay, so, sorry, we swapped around. Star is now the red team. Um, so Star... Star coming in with Ohio Yamato, big guns. They've made good use of that so far. And then we've got Des Moines, Goliath, Goliath, lots of HP there in the two Goliaths. Four destroyers, once again, this time gearing Shimakaze, but Marceau Z52. So you had said, hey, you know, Z52 might be a counter to the Torp Soup, uh, to the Torp Soup from Star. But the Z52 came in from Star as opposed to from xpn so uh yeah why don't we kick it off what's 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 xpn got this time well xpn's bringing that montana ohio combo that they've been relying on uh for the past maps they've got a moskva double stalin so they're diving into that russian comp rounding it out with a nevsky that's going to be a whole lot of ussr that's uh, going to be screened by a gearing and double marceau double marceau potentially can run down and kill some destroyers if they really want to commit to it but as we talked about 
out a bit in the pregame, they got to be able to detect those destroyers. And if they pop smoke, that's going to be a hard sell. Looks like they've spread up, though. How is Star deploying across the map? Yeah, so um, again, four destroyers. This seems to be Star's theme. Um, Star going to go ahead and throw Shimikaze to C for the stealth cap there. Z52 going to ahead and go contest B with this uh, six kilometer hydro. I know exactly what's going to happen. This is going to be absolutely heinous. Everybody cover your eyes because the Z52 is going to permanently hydro this Marceau behind B. The Marceau of uh, Captain Nascimento is going to be there to see and shoot the Marceau of Phoenix Ashes. I think even the Shimakaze and maybe the Gearing will get their guns on if possible, but that's what we're going to see here. Unless uh, Nettoclaus may just sit. There goes his Hydro. He's going to see that Marceau. Star may decide not to try and jump onto this, but we'll see. Um, Marceau obviously very capable of taking a lot of punishment there in the middle and not going down, but that Hydro lasts a long time. So uh, all three caps being contested. Wait, what is this? The gearing of Asherona from XPN is not actually heading into or around to A to try and help contest. He's throwing torpedoes at B. Okay. Interesting. Phoenix Ashes is uh, doing a little bit of dodgeball over here. Dodging some shells, a few connecting. Going to have a whole lot of health pool that he can trade, but that Z-52's Hydro does not go away for easily a minute and a half to as much as almost two and a half, three minutes, depending on how that Z-52 is specced. That's going to be a whole lot of dirty dancing from Phoenix Ashes over in Bravo, who has decided... Fuck this, as he's starting to move toward the edge of the island, trying to juke some stuff. But depending on how quickly or how far he moves forward, that Z-52 might spot him. Z-52 Hydro also keeping him safe from the cross torps from Asherona. And going to be able to dodge those does dip out of the cap. Question if he's going to come back in or try to make a play. Meanwhile, the Marceau of Captain JM is trying to chuck some stuff over the island, but nobody's looking to commit. Uh, the Marceau only has the Moskva potato armor to really guard him but uh looks like star not being taken not taking the bait as they're just slowly working down phoenix ashes methodically netto Kloss able to take some damage down to 17,000, does not have a heal 17 to 17 with the marceau v z52 heads up in the mid uh don't know if that's going to resolve soon unless phoenix ashes breaks from cover and tries to make uh make some plays <laughs> Over at Charlie, that has fallen to Star with the Marceau open watering against Fiota's Goliath that is running for its life. Captain Benevolent Fair slowly backing up and A about to be contested by X100 in the gearing. Um, so slight mis mis uh, miscommunication there. Star is actually now the red team. So C has gone to XPN this time around um, as XPN <clears throat> trying to push their advantage around C as big boys Marceau. Liking to uh, uh, show the Shimikaze of Benevolent Fair just exactly how much of a big boy he is as the Marceau of Phoenix Ash is now finally being pushed out by that consistent Hydro of the Z-52 from Class. This is one of the tricks of the trade for this map, folks. The Z-52 parked right here at the southern or even the northern side of uh, the B-cap can Hydro whatever destroyer decides to try and sit and dive that island and push it right out. Even a Marceau with a very, very large health pool cannot really sit there for like, what, two minutes or something like that and take concentrated fire from ships around the map. And uh, thus, we have Phoenix Ashes retreating with no points gained uh, down 17,000 HP, I believe, maybe 19,000. I'm, I'm, math is hard. Um, I went to school for theater, not math. So uh, A now firmly in the hands of Star as Star went ahead, capped that with the gearing while the gearing of Asherona was busy throwing torpedoes at a Z-52, even though the Z-52, of course, has Hydro. That allows the uh, Des Moines of Lord Loran from, uh, uh, excuse me, from Star to take this very, very strong position over here on the western side, uh, which essentially denies A to XPN forever. Already, I'm going to call this right now, already, Star is beginning to create what they need in order to start horseshoeing XPN over here on this side as the Nevsky of Butters folding back east rather than going north. This is a pretty critical thing generally, and I'm I, I, I'm a fair comp player here, folks, but I'm not perfect. Generally speaking, this Montana of Bookinit and the Nevsky of Butters for XPN side, generally they want to retreat north if they need to, not northeast. They retreat northeast, they allow 
star to freely push up to this next island, which further solidifies their hold around the A cap. The only caveat here is that since star is doing it at A, XPN could theoretically be doing the exact same thing at C. However, the Stalingrad of Nakiri Ayami being very passive, very conservative, staying all the way back here while the Stalingrad of Shrimpy, both heavy cruisers with 12km radar and smacky guns, they are so far back when they should be pushing uh, this advantage that they have because they could both be shooting at the DDs sitting in B. They need to get that Z out of B right now, and the Stalingrads could be uh, critical in doing that. Oh, well, they have found the Z. Uh, let me eat my words here, as he is now getting absolutely dumped upon. No heal, no damage saturation. Damage he takes is damage he gets. So, uh, looks like he may survive this, but good lord. Absolutely, <laughs> Neto being slapped around all the way down to 4,400 health at this point, as the gearing decided to YOLO in and reclaim that island. And that's where we see one of the weaknesses of the Z-52. If you spec hard into that Hydro, it's going to last about three minutes, but then it's going to have about a two-minute cooldown, which most likely that is exactly what the case is. That Z-52 getting surprised, having a whole chunk of ship ripped out of it and being forced back. Eventually, that Hydro will come back up, but as it is not available, it could not be used to block Asherona's gearing from being able to come in and claim Bravo. That's going to put XPN not only up about 50 points, but up two caps to one, which is pretty dang solid. It looks like over on the outside, uh, Star has abandoned the northern push with their Des Moines as Lord Lauren is cutting more center with the Nevsky and Montana of booking it and butters, bailing backward. Rather than moving forward to try to contest a gearing on top of a Des Moines, they've decided to reposition to try to avoid the torps as well as the endless amount of spotting and booking it does actually take one on the tip. Uh, still rocking 82,000 health. The Montana is looking pretty fine as the Des Moines opens up with butters. Does not seem to connect now, but that is an open water Des Moines against a Nevsky. I don't think anybody else has shots on him. So Des Moines taking the trades, looking to see what he can get happening. Yeah. So um, again, I want to go back over here to the C cap. This is the cap that XPN has had pretty solidly and has yet to exploit. They are attempting to, but they did so using an Ohio. The Tanker Killer 3, as pushed up, took about 30,000 HP damage for his efforts because there were no Stalingrads supporting him with radar and with those high-velocity guns to scare these DDs off. So he's just... He's tanking, but he's not going to live forever if he continues this sort of activity. Uh, Nakiri Ayami now pushing up, but pushing up and in rather than up and out uh, as Shrimpy. Shrimpy needed, I, I gotta say, Shrimpy needed to move up at least to this island here. Uh, sorry, Askans, I know that you can't see it, my viewers. The, the island right in front of him, he needed to just move up there while Nakiri took the further island out on the 10 line. That would start to push Fiota's Goliath away. It would start to threaten the uh, Shimikazes. It, there's just so much that it could do and it's just not happening it's it's distressing to me as we take a look back over here onto the uh, west side the Des Moines of Lord Laurent decided not to push up to the next island to try and make that horseshoe but rather to come down to the center of A to attempt to scare these DDs out of B I actually think that's a pretty solid choice as the DDs uh, in B were in fact causing a lot of grief towards the point gains for Star uh Real quick, now we had a point gain of, uh, there's points of 685 to 544 uh, in the favor of XPN. XPN now winning this in 3 minutes 55 seconds if nothing changes as it's two caps to one in XPN's favor. Correct. Looks like the Stalingrad of Shrimpy has now decided oh. to move up as the Ohio of Tank Killer goes down. The Ohio of Camphor over on the star side able to take shots cross and uh, it start whittling down the Ohio, but it was the mighty guns of the Yamato of Floors that was able to finish the kill. Without a smoke able to keep that Ohio safe, even though there is a belated one as Asherona was able to move over to try to assist, that Ohio does go down. It looks like Shrimpy might be moving to take his old position. Uh, if they hold a lot of weight on that position, especially in terms of radar, that might just be something that they were willing to trade the health to make sure they could break. But a lot of destroyer on destroyer violence going as Asherana is spotted, opens up, firing out his guns, trying to hit a Shima, but meeting a Marceau, not a Z-52 as the 4,000 health of Nato Class stays dark in order to stay safe. Asherana with no smoke as he just used it to try to help his Ohio. All he can do is run, and I think he just said, I am effed. He's going to open water gunboat as best he can as shell after shell after shell comes in. That's going to be down goes Asherana. They take about half of Captain Benevolent Fair down. They do claim a 
lot of space. And with that big boy 69's Marceau is one hell of a threat with Phoenix Ashes who has less health but is also in Bravo if it comes down to a destroyer brawl. If they're able to run down, spot the Z-52, and somehow get that Hydro off the map, that Yamato is really far away. The Goliath of Fiota is really far away. And while uh, the Goliath of Guguito, who did just fire, I think, at the Marceau, is close enough to try to help, the Goliath's guns are not fast firing, kind of at all. If uh, these two Marceaus try to make a play against the enemy DDs, uh, once again, I think if Star's Destroyers go down, that can unlock the match. However, the match still firmly in XPN's favor, even though it's only up by about 15 points, as they have a death grip on both Bravo and Charlie, and Star hasn't quite decided on how they're going to try to break that grip free. It's true. So what I'm seeing right now are shades of last weekend when uh, XPN went up against TNG. Uh, and pulled a win off of them as even though TNG managed to secure more kills and managed to have what yeah, most would consider uh, better map control, the problem was that XPN pushed up hard, took a lot of cap, took a lot of points, then ended up losing a lot of ships. But by the end of it, the cap points were just enough so that TNG could not cover the distance to stop the cap points in time and lost even though I believe they were up by three ships and quite a bit of health. So that's the question. I think that's the only chance XPN has here right now to pull off a win and keep the series going into game four. And that is they have to essentially push the star ships back. Star ships, god damn it. They have to push the ships from star back far enough so that even if, uh, even if XPN's numerical disadvantage now ends up kind of losing them uh, big hits from Big of... Boy into the Z-52. Shell's coming out. Are they going to connect? He popped his smoke, but I still think he's detected somehow. Is he going to get out with 337 health? He is. That's oh going to leave God. a Hydro. For oh, no. no. Right that, last second. And that absolutely Wait. takes it down. Potato Armor with the non-potato aim is able to claim the Z-52 and remark it off and take it right off the board. XPN only has two Marceaus in its destroyer favor. So the Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent Fair has quite a bit of detection lead on that even though Phoenix Ashes is just open watering against Captain JM, and I imagine Big Boy 69 might light off pretty soon. There it goes. He's finally got the gun, and they're going to start trading blows. 10,000 health versus 13. Oh, very nasty hits from Captain JM. Quickly drops Big Boy, and some more shells come across. 7,000 to 8. It's a single back-and-forth trade. JM beaches, meaning he just doesn't have the room to maneuver. Some of those shells go wide, but he's down to 3,800. 38 down to 6. Oh, that's 15 more more shells coming in from Marcel. Low health, adrenaline rush kicking. Shells coming out. Is he going to re-beach? He is. Those shells oh, absolutely kick him right off the side of the island. And Bravo stays in the hands of XPN. 968 points to 690. 22 seconds. Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent Fair is charging forward, looking to get some kind of block as a lot of shells come in on booking its Montana. They need the kill in less than 10 seconds just to get some kind of point trade. Montana down to five. Shimikaze of Captain Benevolent Fair is in bravo that extends it out to 15 seconds with 200 health remaining Book down it. goes oh, booking it he does go down that's a huge swing of points xpn is now 934 to 748 as captain benevolent fair is taking bravo with no way to stop him looks like shrimpy might have popped off his radar in which case they'll have some shots but no shots coming out of captain benevolent fair they're actually trying to go over on uh, x100 from star looking to round the corner use his health pool and probably go for some kind of yolk low torp path but with a nevsky shooting many 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 shells into the face of that gearing and only a minute 12 remaining even with the two caps star is not in the lead they need more kills they've got to find it somehow big boy's definitely one of them but he's retreating wants no part of this phoenix ashes however open on the board showing 6500 health gearing of star pushed down to 64 rounds the island he's going to be seen by potato armor that's going to be some big shells i'm pretty sure torps are out down he goes that's going to be it to XPN, able to take game three and take this to a match four. Yep, match four coming up. XPN takes that very exciting last few minutes there, or last few moments. Uh, I think the uh, the choice, I understand the choice of dropping that gearing around the corner to try and waste that Mosp, but I think the opposite corner was the choice, though. I think they needed to send the gearing around the other way as the Marceau, unfortunately, getting caught. Caught there in the B cap. Um, he got caught there in the B cap, attempted to take it. I understand why he did that, but he kind of got caught between 
Well, a couple Russian cruisers and another Marceau, and he just couldn't hold up against that much. So I think Star there, very methodical so far in this um, in this series. Very methodical, very efficient. They sort of got caught with their pants down there and had to make some split-second decisions. And from what the look of it was, in the very last second there, they made a couple of mistakes. Easy to make under pressure, no question. Everybody does it. But I think that worked in XPN's advantage uh, in the form of that gearing coming around the corner probably the wrong way. If you wanted to YOLO that Moskva, you needed to do so from the back <laughs> because otherwise that there was uh, a Marso and a Nevsky all shooting on him even knowing he still needed some time to get around and get his torp tubes lined up on that Moskva. The other way at least would have meant that only the Nevsky would have had clear shots on him. Uh, and then possibly that uh, that Marceau going into the B cap the way he did, I think it may have been safer to just go ahead and back in just to contest barely. But again, when things are that pressurized, Oskans and I can both tell you that comms and cots start getting heated and they start getting wild and people start... Uh, making split-second decisions and getting agitated. Um, so that could have been what happened. Very interesting to note. XPN figured it out. They needed to bring Russian radar. If you are dying to lots of stealth DDs, you have to kill them. And the way that you kill them is you bring radar, that's 12 kilometers, and you bring high-velocity HE guns. Stalingrad's, Moskva's, Nevsky's. Boom. Yeah, doing something, anything to deal with the Star Destroyers definitely had the play. That Z-52's opening claim of Bravo chiseling off, what, 17,000 health off of the Marceau that's like, eh, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'm waiting, I don't want to wait anymore. Yeah, this sucks, bail. You know, <laughs> that was absolutely a huge opening play that the Z-52 was not able to recreate. After the Hydro goes down, I believe XPN was able to time it, or at least had a fairly good guess as they rammed that gearing over from Alpha into Bravo and claimed it. And while they did that, they even got a good amount of damage in on that Z-52 when he got unexpectedly spotted. The Z-52 with a 6.1 detection, whereas the gearing I think is 5.8, might even be as low as 5.6 if you go with the ultimate or unique or whatever the hell it is. Regardless, that Z-52 ate a lot of damage, knocking him all the way down to 4K and turning him into a useful but precious and undamageable asset. So as they started to back up i assume maybe they were waiting for those cooldowns to rock off for the uh for their z52 try to make a counter play they just kind of hung out open water and seeded map space to xpn charlie was claimed very dominantly early on even with the loss of the ohio the double stalin was just too much to deal with and then over at bravo well they had their z52 until they kind of didn't have their z52 anymore and i didn't see how he got detected but he absolutely got murdered even though he smoked and they just didn't have a way back in on bravo when they tried to go in they had a marceau but the marceau was spotted didn't work out then they tried to force it through other means and it just didn't work the shimikaze could have been the first one to go in but because of that russian radar you mentioned it's just not safe enough for the shima they did what they did the star destroyers unable to overcome and uh what the wow well, was a hell of a match that was a hell of a match so the the question now becomes has xpn learned their lesson about how to deal with stars exceptional destroyer play uh, I'm inclined to say yes. Uh, yes, they have. I think they figured it out. I think also they benefited from the fact that uh, Shrimpy and Nakiri Ayami's extraordinarily passive Stalingrad play there in the, I wouldn't say mid-match, didn't make them, didn't hurt them more than it did. Hopefully, for their sake, they will have figured out, okay, you gotta, you gotta take that advantage and you gotta you got to make it happen. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm being told someone saying, make your mini map more transparent. It blocks the view all the time. Fine. I'll just do that then. Do you do that? Do it live. <laughs> do it live. Yeah, I've got my mini map fairly reduced because I have it just extremely huge. Uh, when I'm when I'm derping around in a carrier or whatever, I, I'm not just 
oh wow, these planes are so pretty. I'm just going to stare. I, I stare at the map the whole time. So, I mean, I got to look at a giant map because it's what I can see. But then when you start attacking stuff and it's blocked by this giant window, it's like, darn. So glad they added the transparency feature. And I do try to try to use that as best as I can. You see me take a look at that right now. Is that under controls or is it under graphics? Uh, to control the transparency of the thing when you get into the game, you hold down control, get your little mouse pointer, and you can click on the gear wheel near the map, and then you can adjust transparency. Oh, it's in the it's in the map functions in game. Okay. Yes. So right, I'll you. try to remind you, but I mean, <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> so it looks like the next one that we're going against is Warrior's Path. Now, as much as Star has held an advantage with their destroyer comps. I'm going to have to be honest, I don't know if a DD comp is going to be able to win in Warrior's Path. I don't necessarily see how it would be able to out-influence. Alpha's got so much hidey space and so many, ways, basically ways to block Torp threat that I don't necessarily see that. Although, in the Alpha cap, you could ram a DD home and try to take that island uh, position. And I have been on the unfortunate receiving end of a double, you know, a cross torp situation where they just came from both sides and it's like, whoop, GG. Uh, however, I've, I've only seen that once and never again since. Uh, I could definitely see some destroyers contesting Bravo, kind of like we did on Trap. Usually Bravo doesn't fall very early on this map because it's pretty exposed. Again, kind of like Trap. Uh, they might have somebody snuggling up on an island with a little bit of a cat block contest, but uh, I think Alpha is more of an attrition play. Bravo is more of a, well, which DD just gets to sit here and mind the store. I think it really comes down to how do you take Charlie. Um, <laughs> With a whole bunch of bunkered up maybe Moskvas or people just kind of locked on those islands for some attrition exchanges, it's how you're able to take the 10 line and force people back on the islands to claim space. But even then, if you send a lot of assets over to Charlie, how do you move forward with them? You go between those two islands and you just get pincered, or you could try to wrap around, I suppose, but either still, it's just, I don't know how you'd be able to move through that. Which cap would you take first, Bogsy? I mean, on this map, which do I take first? That's a really good question. I, I think the, the first that you can take is B. Um, and the way you do that is you test the waters with a, a quick DD. And uh, you put them in a safe spot if you get contested and you don't think it's something that you have the backup to take, you get the hell out. Uh, other than that, I've I, in my experience watching and playing on this map, A and C are always caps that require... It just requires the, the DD mating dance. It requires consistent and accurate cruiser support and then it requires the bbs to be smart and accurate themselves um a and c oftentimes end up you know as many maps do uh resulting in whose dds can be out wide flanking enough while wiggling their butt inwards towards the cap with the cruisers providing effective radar cover um and not losing too much of their hp and not eating torpedoes like a scrub that's generally the way but that's tough. The question then, of course, becomes where do you stick your big tanky radar cruisers like Stalingrad's and Moskva's? There are a couple of good options on this map. Um, if I'm XPN and I'm realizing that I should very likely expect to come up against five, excuse me, four destroyers again, I'm putting those cruisers in a place where, a place that basically says, you'll never get into the caps without me letting you. Uh, and when that happens, I sort of, I send my own destroyers in first and I say, good luck. Good luck trying to get in here. And I, I try to bait their torpedoes and bait their radar. And you have to make sure you use your own destroyers as bait for where you know Star's destroyers are going to be. Uh, that's really tough, by the way. Don't make it, don't let me make it sound like that's an easy thing to do. Uh, but that's what COTS is about. COTS is about the best teams in North America that can be put together at the moment coming together to test and see just how good they are against the other best teams. And this is round of 16, baby. We're getting up there. It's, it's time for people to start putting their money where their mouth is. And uh, at least in this situation, Stars Destroyers have proven to be one of the most effective tools they have. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that XPN figured it out before Game 3 resulted in a sweep uh, just because, well, just because it's good to see people it's good to see people learn in game and kind of go, oh, okay, this is what's this is what's causing us grief. How do we counter this? And then effectively do so. Well, I guess I've got only one other question, which is, do we see the Z-52 again? 
because there's so much close in island play on this. Uh, I, obviously, if you're going to go for some cap contesting, the daring is out, so you don't have the heal there. If you really wanted a heal, but you wanted some kind of smoke pressure, I suppose the Grozovoy is still available. Uh, while the Holland could be there, and I believe KSA, I listened to your podcast from the uh, from before, KSA chose the Holland as the ability to just kind of flush quick torps constantly over and over and over again to try to stall any kind of advance and keep a bunch of people hidden behind islands not knowing when the next torps are coming. I do think on this map you're going to have to get some destroyers that have a heal. I don't think the attrition play with the Kilber or the Marceau is going to stand the test of time. I do agree with you that this is going to be a whole bunch of the DD mating dance with the butt wiggle being shot. Um, you know, and just like, you know, somebody that uh, exposes their, their butt cheeks in a paintball match, you know, obviously somebody's going to shoot at them and uh, that's going to leave some marks. So you're going to have to have something that you can kind of wipe that back off. Um, I, I would like to see maybe a Z-52, but I'd like to see something that heals because I just don't see how they're going to be able to make a super aggressive play without some really, really wide flanking kind of stuff. Maybe, oh hell, I don't know, but the match is underway, so we're going to see what they did pick, and we'll have to see if it matches our expectation or not. Yep, a match underway here. Oh, just looking at it, here we go. Star Destroyer is in full effect. Four destroyers coming in once again from Star. We've got Montana, Yamato. We have Salem, Goliath, Venezia. We have Gearing, Marceau, your Z-52, you called it, and Shimikaze coming in for Star. So they did end up bringing the Z-52. We'll see what they do with it. They have also decided to bring a Venezia, uh, a Salem, and a Goliath for the extra throw weight from the Venezia, the extra super long heels from the Salem and the Goliath. And then once again, Montana and that Yamato that they like so much. Yeah, Star seeming to really favor those double Goliath or incorporating a Salem. Mm -hmm. Does seem like they really want a lot of health so that they can kind of win some attrition fights. Over on XPN side, we see an Ohio Yamato. Uh, Booking it changed from his Montana into something with a little bit bigger shells. And we're looking at a Henry. Oh, okay. Well, they're shooting each other, so this is going to be done. But uh, we do see what a Henry, a Stalin, a Nevsky, a Des Moines. And uh, Shima on Shima Violence. All right, well, we're going to hop back to the training room uh, window and see what the heck's going on. All righty. Well, well, now we know what we're going to see. <laughs> yes, indeed. Sorry, guys. Um, Oscons and I, obviously, I, I didn't change the window over fair quickly enough, but Oscons and I are in spectators and can't actually see what uh, is being readied up by the other people. Plus, we've already seen what's... Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it looks, um, looks like Star was a... Uh, they had a DC, and uh, they've only got eight out of nine people on their team at the moment. They've all left, and XPN is slowly catching up. There we go. They're starting to get back to port. So uh, somebody's going to have to get back into the game so that they can do the thing. But Somebody we, DC'd. Yeah. We can talk yeah. about the destroyers. Um, I have to say, I'm a little disappointed, but of course, <laughs> I'm not a Hurricane DD. There's no destroyer on either side that has heals. To me, that means that you're going to have to make some decisive plays because I just don't see how you're able to cap contest on this map without mm -hmm. taking some pretty nasty attrition. You're either gonna have to YOLO the enemy and somehow turn that into a kill, or you're gonna be bleeding health. And you only yep. get to do that so much before even a Marceau becomes combat ineffective when its health just gets too low to trade. So so help me out here, because I'm thinking Smallnet is banned. Um, Daring was banned by, Smallnet was banned by Kotz. Uh, Daring was banned by this, this match. So that leaves Halland which obviously has a lot of torpedo soup, but low damage. Um, and... Uh, well, Grozovoy the and the Kaba. I think those Kaba. are the only two. Wouldn't that be great to see the Kaba? Would be interesting, sure. <laughs> Especially <laughs> after, it's, uh, after it got changed, I guess, to take overpens from battleships. I don't know if it takes overpens from cruisers. I don't think it that was done. Not. It gets yeah. slapped. It gets slapped hard. Um, of course, anybody who's... I mean, generally speaking, if you're playing a Kaba these days, you're playing a Kaba as a open water gunboat and you just farm until, you know, your heart's desire. Um, I think against things like Nevsky's, you're going to have a bad time. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, but, yeah, I have not seen a Kabarovsk. I, 
I was really hoping that somebody during qualifiers a little early on would bring the Chadborovsk just for the sake of it. I remember in group stage one, Jake from 07 brought the Minotaur, the Mimitar, just just for us. I feel like he did that for us. Uh, he died for our sins. So um, I was I was hoping that we'd see some Kabarovsk play this time, but apparently not. Kabarovsk not ever going to be a cap contesting heal DD. So I guess really Graz and Halland are the only options you have there. And I th think I think Grazavoy would really be really be the only option in that regard. I think so. I mean. Uh, I again, I'm not a DD main, but I do believe the Grazavoy has a six kilometer detection, which is certainly usable. It's got smoke, it's got the heal, has a defensive fire. It's not going to care about, but Graz guns ain't nothing to ain't nothing. It's not a slouch, you know, especially right. because you we've constantly seeing gun battles, um, torpedo battle. Like there's been a lot of torp soup. That's definitely been a thing. But seeing over and over and over again how the death to DDs really comes down to the gunfighting. I would expect to see that, and match is underway, so maybe that's what we'll see. Yes, indeed. Well, um, so once again, we're going to go ahead and get started here. We're going to take a look at Star again. Once again, four DDs coming in. Shima Gearing for Torpedo Soup, Marceau for uh, a Brawler, and Z52 for that sneaky, sneaky 6km Hydro with a very decent Torps with quick reload as well. 10.5km, decent damage, and uh, I, I believe it can get down to just over a minute of torpedo reload uh but again uh, relatively low health pool on the z and unfortunately i mean it's not terrible sorry but uh, relatively low and uh no heal is one of the big things there so uh what's xpn looking like xpn has changed up their battleship lineup just a bit going from a montana ohio to an ohio yamato booking it in a yamato now able to take a position just kind of bow in and rip people apart from shells coming from anywhere we'll have to see if any of those big shells really change as the montana with 406s cannot do what a yamato can uh, the rest of the lineup is going to include a Stalingrad, a Nevsky, Des Moines Henry. So pulling away from the Russian lineup to give a Henry to give some kite and a Des Moines for some more close in island pressure, which this map can certainly utilize. The DDs being rounded out by a double Marceau and a gearing of Asherona. We're going to have to see how that all works out. The double Marceau could pose a destroyer threat, but again, they might lack detection depending on where they are in the map at the time. So uh, right off the beginning here, we're going to see a clash. Double Marceau in B. I don't know if they're going to see each other. I don't think so. Uh, and then Z52 Marceau at A. Now, somebody saw the Marceau there. So uh, what's happening here is we're going to see yet again the Z52 and the Marceau going head to head against one another uh, over an island. This time, I think it's worth noting that Star are going to go ahead and send their gearing and their Z over to A. The Marceau is going to play uh, is going to play Hey Neighbor with the other Marceau at B. Looks like that's going to be that way for a little while, while the Shimakaze of Star goes over to C. Um, that means double DD at A uh, against for Star against one DD at A for um, sorry for XPN because of the fact that that DD is a Marceau at A. Oh, a Marceau with ten thousand, eleven thousand HP less than he started oh lord yeah. that must have been that was the venezia of gigito over in the south uh that sap volley just took off probably about seven thousand just by itself there were a few other shells that made connection but uh phoenix has was able to rise from the ashes right there in the beginning and is immediately already starting to look ragged uh phoenix known for rebirth however marceau without that heal not going to be able to rebirth anytime soon so he's going to be looking a little ragged while the z52 keeps them hydroed i believe we just saw this before as shells are going to start coming in and most likely that venezia is going to start going wider and wider and wider shells even from the mighty yamato going to come down and one of them connects that takes him down to 13 five phoenix ashes is going to be stuck in a situation one more time do i stay in the cap or do i go in this case the z52 is detected some shell fire happening trying to push him off and looks like a is going to fall to xpn yep uh, once that happens here the question remains what does he do afterwards my guess is he absolutely bails and if he does bail 
that's going to allow uh, the gearing of, oh man, another couple thousand coming in from the Yamato across the map, hitting that Marceau, who's now down to 10,000 uh, HP. Huge sacrifice from that Marceau. On the other hand, the Venezia, this is exactly what we expected to see. Venezia of Guido Ruivao uh, uh, has moved out here to the edge to try and get flanking shots on that Marceau. Um, so he may sit there. He may just chill behind that rock and say, this is my rock. I dare you to come take it from me. I don't know who wins the trade between an uh, Henri and a Venezia out here on the flank. Um, meanwhile, over at C, B is still a staring contest over the B island. C once again has devolved into what we expected, which is a DD against each other with the backup of a cruiser and a battleship. However, in this case, it's actually a cru two cruisers for Star uh, against just a smoked up Nevsky for uh, XPN. I don't know, has has the Salem of Lord Laurent, has he radared butters? I think, I think nope, he just I, outside of range. Well, I don't know if he was able to see Butters, but he certainly saw Asherona as they took a chunk out of the gearing, down about 5,000 health. He had to bail. Shim is going to be torping into the open water uh, position of the Nevsky. And if we look at what Charlie's assets have, the Shimikasi has got a detection uh, edge over the gearing. Nevsky can radar, but with a Salem and all of its heels, and a Goliath and all of its heels, I don't see a way in hell that this Nevsky is going to be able to dislodge Charlie. And sure yeah. enough, Captain Benevolent Fair is getting into position to start to contest Charlie. If uh, Nevsky pops the radar and chews a little bit off, that radar is only going to happen once, and then C is going to fall. Gearing of Asherona already pointed in the opposite F this direction. I have to assume Butters is going to have to follow shortly behind. If C is going to fall to star, that means that A has to succeed for XPN, as the gearing of Captain JM Nascimento is moving forward and actually has already popped smoke. Uh, looks like there's a Des Moines. I believe his radar should be back up from the Z, but no, he's going to be too far away. So unless Shrimpy's going to try to charge a, uh, a gearing in smoke, which is unlikely, I don't see how this one's going to resolve in favor of Star. But at the same time, I see how A is going to be contested until Des Moines radar after Des Moines radar after Des Moines radar slowly chisels down that Z-52. Yep, and speaking of which, he's already taking damage. This is one of the big uh, downsides to the Z, is it's very fragile. Um, it likes to take... It's a big ship. It likes to take full pens from AP when AP uh, ends up hitting it, and uh, it's pretty decently easy to hit, sort of in the same way that the Halland and the Smiland are. It just likes to take full pens. So uh, a little chip damage onto him there. Uh, looking like looking to me, though, like uh, the Shimikaze of Star going to go ahead and take C here shortly. Which is going to leave, uh, which is going to leave basically both teams even on caps as soon as they're done with that. Like you said, I don't think I see a way where XPN can actually prevent, um, uh, prevent. Sorry, XPN can prevent them from taking C and then holding C as Salem Goliath against a Nevsky is just it's so much HP. Uh, when the Nevsky's main source of damage is lighting fires against cruisers or um, slapping broadside things with AP, which it's not going to get to do. So Phoenix Ash is still stuck here at this B cap, holding on like a Chad completely. However, the Des Moines of Nakiri Ayami being just pummeled to death and... Somehow still alive, but <laughs> spotted by Captain JM. 24 health until he down goes to the Z. Uh, the Z is going to be able to unlock the radar off that cap. The Yamato, Henry, and Marceau not going to have detection as Phoenix Ashes continues to hold the point with his body weighted against the press of four incoming star, uh, star members. One big development that's happened in Bravo. X100 has been hard spotted by Big Boy, who has not taken shots in return. And the gearing of Ash Sharona pushed off from Charlie had was able to lob that uh, island and rip about half the health off that Marceau with the gearing of Asherona pushing and big boy 69 looking for some plays if this gearing is able to get some eyes on here and sure enough he is guns barking Marsona or Marceau is nothing to screw with but looks like that gearing's got smoke, and now that X100 has spotted himself by opening his guns, incoming shell fire, more and more damage coming in, taken from 12 all the way down to 6. So far, Big Boy 69 is now running down 4,000, 3,000. Can X100 get out of the cap? I don't know, but if he's able to break line of sight with this island, he might live. Turns away from the island break, but now slinging back toward it. If he's able to go dark, he's going to get out with probably about 1,000 health. One last volley coming in... 
Looks wow. like he's down to 1400, not on fire. He's going to make it out, but that's going to be Bravo Cap heading over to XPN. XPM holding on to A for now. Neto Kloss coming in, probably with the Hydro. Phoenix Assage is stuck between a gearing and a hard place with only 8,000 health. It is a Marceau. Marceau with adrenaline rush and a whole bunch of gun pressure that can't see the gearing that's killing it. He's yeah. got to run because the Z52 with that Hydro is just going to lock this down. Some AP shells coming out. Down to 2,500 Phoenix Ashes. Looks like this Phoenix is not long for this world. He may eventually be reborn into another match, but not going to be in this one. That's Alpha. Definitely going to fall in the hands of Star. Charlie still being held with the immense health pool of a Goliath. And Bravo has fallen, but now XPN is going to have to find some way to reclaim a section of this map. They are down 160 points at this time. There's still a lot of possibilities on the field. A lot of time to go. Oh. Looks like Marceau rushing the Z. Oh, gearing down to 186, though. My lord, the Marceau striking from beyond the grave as the gearing of Nascimento getting... Oh, and is he somehow down? What was that, Hydro? You've got to be kidding me. No, that can't be Hydro. I don't know how... He had a Hydro hoping to catch something. The gearing of Nascimento now down to 186. He is out of this match, effectively. Blind shots coming in at him just because why not? The Z-52 of Nettoclos not able to actually get into A, which is a big, big deal because he knows Marceau of Big Boy coming in. Also, Salem of Lord Laurent taking big hits over there from the Ohio as the Ohio overmatches his existence. So, wow. Okay, uh, two ships down for XPN now. The gearing of Star of Nascimento is effectively out of the match, but because he's a torpedo boat, he can sit here in the back, 10 cam or whatever he wants away, and sling torpedoes till he jolly well pleases. Um, the question is, who's going to be able to take advantage of the fact that A is exposed now? Nettoclaw is going to go ahead and stick his ass in. If he's still got Hydra, which I don't know that he does, he's going to know that Big Boy is coming. But does he know? Even if he doesn't and Big Boy surprises him, he's in a perfect, perfect, perfect position to be able to run away and get behind this island. I'm really, really impressed with the destroyer play from Star. They, I, they, must, they practice this shit, man. <laughs> well, here's the question. Is Neto baiting Big Boy into the kill? If Big Boy rounds the corner, is able to see Neto and starts to eke around it, the guns of Gigito are waiting. That's going to be a whole bunch of shap shells aiming at a Marceau that's fairly broadside if he tries to take it. But right now, Big Boy is keeping it in his pants. The cap contest continues with Neto looking for the bait but unable to find it. Asherona moving in to support. The gearing that was taken all the way down to 186, uh, Captain JM is now reduced to spotting and nothing else. But with a lack of detection consumables is absolutely safe as I'm pretty sure the gearing outruns the hen so no threat there the real question comes how is this pinch play going to resolve at alpha i expect both of these destroyers are going to start moving forward soon and once they start catching those lines they're going to start opening up but once again the guns of that venezia are waiting he pops his smoke he's not detected sap shells out that's going to be into the gearing there Oof. goes about 5,000 health but that's not enough and the venezia is going to be spotted i believe after taking that shot shells from a stalin come in Take him down to 14. More shells from the gearing, who is beginning to angle against the sap. Are That's those going to connect? He turns in. Nope. Down to four. Z is pushed off. Marceau claims, and that's going to be the fall of Alpha, as Bravo is cheekily taken by Captain Benevolent. Star claiming Bravo and the right side of the map, with Tanker Killer moving forward aggressively with no, I repeat, no screening a front in front of him, with five star, well, five members in front of him looking to make plays. God, the Venezia it goes down Neto Kloss down to 3700 health and torps holy shit the torps he's gonna get him he's gonna get him Oh, oh barely boy not. slinks through, and that's going to be some gunplay, and that gun is going to rip that Z in half. Oh Down to 700 Lord. health, Big Boy is still alive. The gearing of Asherona somehow lives as well, and just like that, Alpha is completely broken. The gearing 186 health and running in a Montana of floors, well, it's got big guns, but it's got nothing else to do other than run away and potentially snipe, because this dude is out of the match. Question is, what's going to happen with Star coming out of Bravo and C as the Ohio tanker killer has stepped in Bravo and said, bring it.
yeah, so very exciting stuff going on here. Obviously, the major thing being that the Marceau of Big Boy and the Gearing of Asherona are still alive. They managed to trade out. They took two ships with them, the Venezia and the Z-52, and they're still alive. The Gearing of Nascimento is still alive as well. A much bigger threat, I want to say, at even 1 HP than a Marceau at 772 is. Um, the Marceau of X-100 on Star's side sitting on 1500, obviously having a little bit of a difficulty himself here. But uh, the question now remains is star able to go ahead and take b get this ohio out which this is something that tanker killer has done a couple times now we've seen this twice where he dives himself into a cap i don't know that this was the time to do that or if it was maybe take this opposite side where he's not exposed so much he's exposed to torpedoes from destroyers he's exposed to crossfire from this montano which is on its way in right now albeit i believe it's he uh he's he's very exposed and he's doing so in order to take B, but it's it's not going to stand. No battleship like that's ever going to be able to sit in B and just take it. They're going to reset him. So I question why they sent him in there when they have... Well, they do have two destroyers, neither of which are healthy. I guess I question why he chose this side, why he didn't chose, ch chose. He didn't choose to come in on this side. Maybe I missed something. Forgive me if I did. I'm only uh, Bogsy, but... Um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time here before Tanker Killer goes down. B is completely in Star's control. And then uh, at the moment, 626 for XPN, 600 for Star. Same amount of points coming in for both teams. Um, so many low ships right now. The question is, who starts losing them first? We've got some shells coming in from Floors. He might be pinned against the wall and unable to move toward Alpha, but he can certainly shoot from there. Shells coming all the way across from downtown over into Ohio of Tanker Killer. The Ohio has a rapid cycling heal. It's got quite a lot of health. Maybe not as much health overall as the Montana does with the bigger, longer, nastier stuff. But uh, nonetheless, it is stuck in the middle. I think Asherona is going to try to come in here with the smoke to help out. Oh my goodness, the Asherona has opened up with 3,000 health on Captain Benevolent Fair with two. Uh, or with 20,000. Uh, he's going to have an Ohio there to try to help him. Shots come out, and then some secondaries or something. But the Shima clocked down to 11k is able to secure the kill on Asherona. That's going to leave the Ohio without a destroyer being picked at by X-100's Marceau firing from over an island while being wrapped by a Goliath Salem and being sieged by a Montana and a Yamato in the south. I, I don't think Tanker Killer's long for the world. I think you got the right of that, Bogsy. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around what was the what was the plan with Asherona opening up on that Shima? Or, I mean, he must have been going there for some reason to try and maybe to to screen for Tanker Killer or something. But he saw he saw the torpedoes that came in from the Shima of Benevolent Fair earlier because they slammed into the Ohio from the front. Fortunately, he didn't actually take that many, but they had to know. Well, that's where he is. <laughs> pay, pay attention, as it uh, looks like uh, maybe two two torpedoes going to find their mark on the Ohio now. I. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be uh, all she wrote. Looks like not. But Yamato shells, boom, finish it off. And it is now uh, four ships down for XPN. Oh, dude. Holy oof. Book of it. <laughs> book of it just took Fiona downtown and booked him. That was dumb. I'll yeah. Better. So honestly, I mean, the loss of the Ohio, it was not unexpected. But the loss of a more than half health Goliath and all the healing that the Goliath offers, that's massive. That's just completely not a joke. The Salem of Lord Lauren has been trading with the Nevsky of Butters for over a while. I don't know how many Salem heals are remaining. Butters doesn't have that healing and doesn't have a smoke to use, but with 21,000 to 18,000, that's something that could be breached, especially with Shrimpy's Henry moving more toward the mid and able to assist if they're able to come in and get some kind of spotting. However, right now, Star holding a pretty decisive advantage with 110 points in their favor in two caps we see a marceau a big boy looking to make some moves but with a salem radar that's not going to be an easy play the only thing i can imagine is big boys trying to run back for charlie and x100 seems to be rotating expecting that but in the battle of a 1400 health dd against a 700 health dd whoever shoots first probably wins but the remaining yep. shells that are coming back probably get the kill anyway if that's a trade that's going to go in the favor of star as charlie will not fall and the points will continue to tick to star uh the <laughs> i 
This is tough, but they gotta find a way in. XPN has to either block a cap or take a cap, and right now the only hope I see is Big Boy 69 with a Henry and Nevsky looking to see if they can pinch a Salem somehow. Yeah, I think you hit it right on the head, which was that Big Boy's best option now as a 700 health, 800 health Marceau is to back cap, provide cap pressure, and essentially, since he can't really fight anything at this point or smoke up anyone, he's got to just be a threat to the caps. Um, I, I'm not surprised, though, to say that Star's destroyer play has been absolutely exemplary, and they foresaw this they thought about it and they said well the only one who can go do it is going to be the basically dead more so oh my Holy god shit. Down goes. <laughs> what is happening well that's Again. decisive what a huge swing the salem just gets popped that's no more salem heels there either now that henry of oh, shrimpy shit. just got clocked by yamato of camp for a little earlier but he still had enough help nope now nope, down to four the yamato ain't fucking around but that's no. going to be a henry holding bravo with the nevsky of butter suddenly open to walk forward and radar and murder if butters is unable to be held in check that absolutely could lead to the fall of bravo and charlie and with that that would be the end of star's hopes for this match still big boy and x100 playing chicken who's going to take it first looks like the marceau is actually going to finish charlie henry of shrimpy does go down c is still in the open butters with 1800 health probably not too scared of a yamato gunfire between the marceaus it's open it's lit x100 already hit down to 200 goes down to big boy big boy's angled 400 remaining that's charlie falling to xpn oh. we've got the nevsky of butters that has a much better detection than that henry slinking in toward bravo and is lit not lit by the shimikaze of captain benevolent fair that's 816 to star <gasps> They're going to take it with time. Holy crap. That's game three. Oh, oh that's my God. Insanity. There's two seconds left. <laughs> two seconds left. It goes to star. My God. That's insane. Holy crap. That is it, folks. We were so excited about the actual. We were so excited about the trading that was going on that we weren't even paying attention to the game clock and it literally came down to who had more points and it happened to be star at the time four to four ships at the end star definitely had a massive health advantage but looking by what judging by what we were seeing xpn had actually erased the i want to say the the strategic uh, setup gains that star had worked so hard for and had the opportunity if there was more time to come back and take that back but it ended up being who had more points when the clock ran out congratulations to star that's that's huge saved by the bell a whole bunch of duking back and forth boxing rounds and eventually it came down to points and star was able to pull out uh <laughs> in the end that that uh, if there were two more minutes to that match, the complete collapse of Bravo and Charlie. That Henry, oh, he took some corners. He cut himself and he showed himself in front of a Yamato and he paid for it. But the Nevsky would have come in and been able to claim Bravo, swing that radar around and just make it happen. And can we talk about what happened at sea? The 700 versus 14 and the 1400 Crazy. went down with the first shells landing and then the follow up slowly chiseling him. Holy shit such an incredible play by xpn in an attempt to claw it back but it turned out the point said no even though you got this play it wasn't enough too little too late you didn't make it happen but damn if it wasn't close well i mean god i special props to both yamato players as well as that game was nearly decided by a blap or two and both Yamatos on each side blapping a ship in quick succession. Uh, I think that uh, booking it from XPN managing to blap two cruisers that were about f uh, half health, uh, denying them, yeah, that very, very big super heal that they each have. That's a major deal. Uh, kudos to him. And then on top of that, I forget who the Yamato of uh, Star was, um, but he, he went ahead and blapped himself a cruiser as well. I I am astonished. Well played both. Uh, Star, you guys have earned a special place in my heart, not just because of the Star Wars memes, but because of excellent gameplay, excellent destroyer play, and excellent map control and map awareness. So, um, wow, really, really special.